And Roger Staubach, sore need, will lead him. Phil Sims, the rookie. And Ray Perkins, the giant coach. The Giants, owners at the moment of the longest winning streak in professional football. This is Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey, and it is packed. In fact, they say this is the toughest ticket to come by in a long, long time. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire, and the atmosphere here is like I can't remember it. Well, the, uh, the special players for the Giants came out and received a thundering ovation. They looked around like maybe a, a cardinal or somebody from the church had come <laughs> through, but it was a great ovation, and I, it's a turned-on stadium. I agree with you. And all the Giant people who won four straight, as we mentioned, will tell you, and they have already. We'll find out what we are really like today. Well, Sims uh, has only two interceptions in his last 92 attempts. Uh, he's going to see a very sophisticated defense. If the Giants are going to do the job against Dallas, they've got to score early, and they've got to do well on first down, which is a pretty hard thing to do. Dallas comes off a, a very severe physical beating last week by Pittsburgh. I wonder how they're going to react. Well, the defense played pretty well. You hold the Steelers to 14 points. Uh, I do think that offensively they have to kick the traces and get at it and give uh, Roger perhaps a better first and second down himself. He was third down and long a lot against Pittsburgh. And they have to get a lot more out of that fullback position. Are Dallas has won the toss. Let's get down there. Are you ready? I'm really ready today. The officials today, the referee is Jerry Mark Bright. And you can see the rest of his crew. I hope they're ready. It's going to be a tough game to officiate with all oh, these I ran fast into, players. I ran into him in the tunnel downstairs, and there were no smiles. They are ready. <laughs> they get their game face all on Friday. Bill Sims loosening up on the far side of the field. A perfect day. Boy, you couldn't ask for a better day for football. You couldn't ask for a more enthusiastic crowd. Ron Springs and Steve Wilson back deep for Dallas, and Joe Danello will kick off for the Giants. And Springs is really dangerous, the young rookie from Ohio State for Dallas. And so is Wilson. The Giants do a couple of funny things on the opening kickoff, putting some extra people on the left-hand side where Springs will start to operate. Oh, he is hit down quickly. Way over. Otis McKinney. As soon as he fielded. Now the high-powered Dallas offense will operate. And we'll see how perhaps solid the team is. Donovan, Scott, Fitzgerald, Rafferty, Cooper, the, as you say, the Iro line, right? How, how hurt is Roger Staubach? We'll find out how badly his knee is really strained. The rest of his supporting cast, Tony Dorsett, Robert Newhouse, the running backs, Tony Hill, and Drew Pearson wide, and Billy Joe Dupree. They start off with a double tight end offense. Jay Salvey, number 87, now shifts into the backfield. And goes in motion, first and 10. Dorsett cuts up the middle for four or five. Ray Oldham made the tackle. And of course, the Giants are in that 34 defense and getting more aggressive each week from it. Martin, Mendenhall, Jeter. Martin a little bit against the pass, but not so tough against the run. Brad Van Pelt, Dan Lloyd, Harry Carson, and Brian Kelly. And that is Brad Van Pelt and the protection, the flak jacket that he is wearing today for those injured ribs. Bad ribs suffered against the Los Angeles Rams in the secondary. And those linebackers came up with four interceptions against the Rams a week ago. They played very well. Second and five. Dallas operates from their own 23. Starback runs up draw, draw play to Scott Laidlaw. He is near a first down. Perhaps he has it. Stopped by Dan Lloyd, who's got a chance to play since they went to that 3-4 lineman. A lot of people think that the Cowboys have to run the fullback more or get something out of him or Dorsett is not allowed for those 100-yard days. Here's that giant secondary. Jackson and Rhodes, of course, at the corner. Reese and Oldham, and Oldham used to be with the Steelers before this year. He's a good little player in safety. Laidlaw got the first down on that draw play, so it's first and 10. Minus scrimmage the Dallas 29. No score, opening second to Giants Stadium. Newhouse back alongside Dorsett in the backfield, and Salvi again comes in motion. Inside no game. Dan Lloyd again on the tackle. Like Mendenhall might have slid under too. Let's take a look at it. You're from behind the Dallas offense. Fitzgerald gets good position on Mendenhall, but like the bouncing ball, he slipped right around the block and still made the play. And his back apparently is feeling uh, much better. They said that Perkins said, We need you. Get well, big fella. And since that time, he's played very well. One yard loss for Dorsett as Staubach brings him out in a hurry. It'll be a tough day for John Fitzgerald with Mendenhall lined up in front of him all day. The 
pitches back to Dorsett. Tony D for four or five. Gary Jeter on the tackle. All the way from the offside. Again, if you're in the 34, there's young Sims now, making sure he is flat out warm. He had his birthday yesterday. He is 24. He is not a young rookie, nor does he act like him. I've seen him knock down, and he jumps up and stares down the attacker. Uh, he's almost as poised as number 12, but not quite. It is third and five. Billy Joe Dupree comes out, so does Dorsett. Butch Johnson goes in along with Ron Springs. Springs playing in the position today where normally it would be Preston Pearson. Third down was tough against Pittsburgh because it was third and long. They had a lot of them. Shotgun formation. And the time is adequate. And the pass is complete to Ron Springs. Brad Van Pelt, the closest giant, but it'll be enough for a Dallas first down. Boy, and Springs has the softest hands for a guy that's put together like a statue. Number 20 will come to the left of your screen. Roger out of the shotgun. Boy, he has a lot of time. And those soft hands, he puts it away for the first. Let's see what uh, Jay Sawley did now. He is in the slot position on the shotgun. He got chucked a couple of times, at least twice, maybe three times. You're not supposed to do that, are you? Well, if you get away with it, you're supposed to. <laughs> first down, Dallas at the 44. Their own. Robert Newhouse takes the handoff and spins around for about three. John Mendenhall, again, the first giant to hit him. There's Ray Perkins, the giant coach. You know what I saw him do before the game? And I saw him go around to each member of the giant squad, 45 of them, as they were doing exercises, and look them right in the eye and shake their hand and wish them good luck. And I said, you know, when I played, it was four years sometimes, and the coach was still calling me Tiger or Pro <laughs> or something like that. That's a good feeling, though. I remember that before the Super Bowl in New Orleans, Red Pillar of the Denver Broncos told us that same thing, and he said that was one of the keys to his success. He felt. Here's Staubach out to Dorsett, who heard Mendenhall coming and wisely let the ball get away. Can you imagine Mendenhall, the nose guard, getting into the flat? Let's see what happens. Right to center, left center of your screen. He hits Fitzgerald, starts to make penetration, and reads it. That is a veteran savvy. Oh, you're right. Dorsett could feel the pitter pat. They were trying to set up that quick screen that they execute so well. Ron Springs checks back in. Third down, they need seven from the 47. Snowback back in the shotgun. Long again. Protection is excellent. Snowback is down by Gary Cheater, who tripped him up shy of midfield, and Dallas will have to punt. Again, it wasn't a big rush. It wasn't a big blitz. Three men going. They dropped eight people back, cut off the intermediate zones. Here's Martin now being doubled. Watch the big fellas. He starts out number 12. Number 70 just does trip him up. Number one draft out of USC. I don't believe he touched him at all. I believe Roger just uh, ran on the sides of his feet. I think that's correct. Bobby Hammond back deep for the Giants and Danny White. Ever dangerous from punt formation. We saw him pass last week against the Steelers. But this time he will kick. Second in the NFC. Chases Hammond back. Hammond comes out of the pocket that it looked like he might be in. A 47 yard punt by Danny White. And the Giants will take over about their own 15 yard line. Dennis Thurman made the tackle. No score at Giants Stadium with 9.47 left to play in the first quarter. What is it? Me love sandwich and a light. Yeah. Gentlemen, as we all know and appreciate, light has one third less calories than a regular beer, and it's less filling. But the best thing is, it tastes great. Less filling. By your oh, this is my broccoli. That's my beer. What's wrong with you guys? Well, hey, Bubba, you want the peas? Ooh. Hey, you gonna eat all that? Just showing off. Gentlemen, in closing, I'd like to think I speak for all of us, but I say if it wasn't for light, I wouldn't be where I am today. Hey, you proposed! Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. And one 
Let's look at the Giants offense. Still having some trouble with the pass protection. Benson Van Horn playing very well at left guard. Clack, J.T. Turner, and Gordon King in there for the second week. Big offensive tackle. The backs and receivers for the Giants. Phil Sims, the quarterback. Taylor and Coder, the running backs. Johnny Perkins back in motion. Offensive line with a good charge stopped by Randy Hughes. Six yard pickup. Let's look at the Dallas defense. Again, first down is tough to run against these fellas. Larry Cole, Stalls, White, Harvey Martin. Look for Harvey maybe to have a big pass rushing day. For the linebackers, Guy Brown in place of Tomas Henderson. <laughs> Bob Brunig in the middle and Dee Lewis. Ever present on the outside, the secondary. And they haven't intercepted a pass in two or three weeks, but they hold the percentage completion rate down to about 43 percent. Second and four. Billy Taylor bangs outside the 25, and he'll have a first down. Harvey Martin led the tacklers, along with Guy Brown. Smart move, though. Make everybody play honest on defense. Look to the left of your screen. J.T. Turner really does a good job blocking down on stalls. To be able to get a first down without throwing the ball early against Dallas uh, is almost as good as scoring early against Dallas. Brad Benson is starting now at left tackle instead of Gordon King, number 60. Dallas in that flex defense. And again, it's Billy Taylor. Backs cross in the giant backfield. Again, they get sizable yardage. Randy Hughes has to make another tackle. Let's take a look at the left side. That's Benson, number 60, trapping from the outside in. The left tackle pulls back through the hole, seals off Bruning. Three plays in a row, running plays, at the very power of that Dallas defense. This makes you sit back, even if you're Randy White, and say, hey, what's going on? Three running plays for the Giants, all by Billy. Go, guy! Go, guy! Picked up 16 yards. They can maintain that average. Things will be fine. Here is Doug Coder. That'll hurt the average. Dee Dee Lewis tripped him up. Great play by Larry Cole. Helped Dee Dee Lewis, the end and linebacker who played on all those great Super Bowl teams for the Dallas Cowboys. They're two of the original five that have done it. Watch Cole strip it, straighten up the guard who's trying to pull, and then Dee Dee finishes off. And Harvey Martin was there chasing all the way across the field. It'll be third and eight as Bruce Thornton has replaced Larry Cole. Go in for Dallas. Johnny Perkins and Ernest Gray, the wide receiver. Faking the Giants. blitz. Are they faking the blitz or are they coming with it? They fake. Sims outside. The bleak. Johnny Perkins. Not enough for a first down. First pass attempt for, per, for Sims. And one completion. Tony Dorsett. Getting ready to go back in for Dallas. Roger Staubach may have hurt that injured knee. We noticed Danny White did get warmed up on the sideline. So the next time the Cowboys have the ball, uh, we might see a change of quarterback. Dave Jennings to Steve Wilson. Wilson straight ahead to about the 38 yard line before Otis McKinney again is involved in the coverage tackle, a 44 yard kick by the number one kicker in the NFC, Dave Jennings. Roger Staubach's coming back. And Tom Landry looks on. Nothing, nothing score. I'm Cheryl Teague. I feel at home in front of the camera. But behind the camera, I don't know the difference between a lens opening and a Broadway opening. So I rely on my Olympus OM-10. My trusty OM-10 gets great shots automatically. My OM-10 has this smart little red light that tells me when it's okay to shoot. Oh, it's okay to shoot. Hold it, fellas! With Olympus OM-10, great shots automatically. Introducing the first new truck of the 80s, the new Ford, the long-distance champ. It has the longest range of any truck in America. With a standard 19-gallon tank plus optional tank, you've got a 38-gallon capacity. That gives it an estimated range with optional overdrive of 722 miles based on EPA ratings. The estimated highway is 1,102 miles. More than one-third the length of America on one fill-up. 
Ford pickups, the longest range of any truck in America. Sunday, Ann Mira joins Archie Bunker's place as a street smart cook who can really dish it out. Don't be stupid. Sunday! Dallas out of the huddle and ready on first and ten at their own 38. No score. Cowboys first in offense, the Giants last in offense. You wouldn't know it so far. First set, take one way, went back the other, got a couple, no more. John Mendenhall again on the tackle. Oh, and to play the 34, you've got to have a nose guard that is like a rat. By that I mean he can straighten up the offensive center, fight pressure, not get finessed, and slide into it. Now watch right in front of number 12. Fitzgerald's battling, but Mendenhall does not give ground and slide right over at the last minute. Tough place to play, but he can do it. Not many rats can do that. <laughs> Second down. They need eight for first. Stahlbach drops. Dorset catches. Ducks under to about the 45. Fumble. I think the ball was dead. It hit the ground when Dorset hit the ground. That's what the officials say, and they agree with you. Dan Lloyd made the hit. There is Hollywood. Tomas. It's a nice coat. He hurt his back, and now he's got a hamstring pull, and, uh, you know, he's such a great player that when he says he can't go full speed, Landry said, no problem. Guy Brown will do the best job he can in there. The thing he's on the shady side of the field. That coat was smothering. Third and three. He said it's not hunting season. Maybe it is. Maybe that's how he got it. Stall back again to throw. Looking around. Behind Roger. Billy Joe Dupree has it. And held on. Billy Joe might be shaken just a bit. And now the officials say it was knocked loose by Beasley Reese and Brad Van Pelt. And Billy Joe could not hang on. That's two weeks in a row now that Billy Joe has had the ball and put it away. Didn't have it stolen. Remember the Pittsburgh game? Yes. All right, watch this play. Number 89, and Roger has to do this while he's dancing. And romance a good throw. I'll tell you, the Giants secondary and linebackers are beginning to like that 34. Van Pelt dug it. Never did quite get it put away. Bobby Hammond back deep for the Giants, and Danny White into the game for Dallas. There's little Bobby Hammond, who is little in stature, but not in heart. battle with Dave Jennings to see who is the NFC's leader. That's a good kick. Hammond up with the fair catch. Single drops it. And they're still chasing it. The Giants got it. I think that uh, the Giants' own player, I believe Beasley Reese, got tangled up with the returner. And I'll tell you, everybody that goes back and tries to help the punt return man has got to find out where the ball is. You can see Reese sort of hit his foot, lost the concentration. Otis McKinney struggling to come up with the football, and he finally does make the recovery. So there is still no score at Giant Stadium with 5.08 left first period. Why have over one million people Midasized their brakes? Was it because they know Midas has brake mechanics that are specially trained? Was it because they know Midas has the right brake parts in stock? Or was it because they know Midas has over 20 years' experience under the car? Well, whatever the reason, it certainly was no accident. It pays to Midasize your brakes. After all these years, I still like working out. But what I really like is the beer that's waiting for me when it's over. And if you work out the way we do, there better be a lot of beer waiting. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. Light has one-third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling, and it tastes great. Take it from a guy who works out a lot. Could really use one right now. There you go, Bruce. <laughs> like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. That's Vicka Myers, 39-yard uh, field goal for Chuck Knox's team in the first. Jaworski to Carmichael for a touchdown pass. They missed the extra point against Cleveland. And Bill Sims with good protection. Fires down the middle for Ernest Gray and got it. First down, Giants. Now 
up to almost the 35, Aaron Kyle. Good throw. 21 yard pickup. And it's the second pass. This one across the middle. The, thing, the story on Ernest Gray, the young man from Memphis State, is that he had great speed, but he might not catch it. And now the reports have all changed. They say he has soft hands, and after he catches it, he's a lot like Tony Hill, which is quite an endorsement. Well, he's some kind of a young receiver. Grant Joyce is number one and two in that combination. Here's Billy Taylor at the line of scrimmage, met by D.D. Lewis. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Giants and the National Football League is prohibited. The Cowboy defense now has 26 sacks and a million hurry-ups. Don't ever feel sorry for Harvey Martin, Randy White, Larry Cole, and Stahl. They're a good bunch. Harvey, the captain of that group. Second and nine. Sims goes back. Fires to the outside. Intended for Gary Shirk, covered by Guy Brown. He was the nearest. Guy Brown, one of those good athletes on that Dallas roster that didn't get too much of a chance to play, but now he is. Benson, number 60, working against Harvey Martin. Harvey's an outside rusher that now has picked up the inside move. Benson this time keeps enough cloth in his hands to uh, retard the big defensive end. Third and nine, and look out for this one. Dallas on the other third down situation, make the blitz and dip. Let's see what they do this time. They do. Let's pick it up. Picked off by Cliff Harris. To the 30, down inside the 30. Dallas will have good, good field position from there. Billy Taylor made the tackle, but Cliff Harris got the rebound. I talked to Cliff before the game. I said, what do you think about Sims? He said he's a lot like Bradshaw, but he's young. This time, the young man from Moorhead State throws it into traffic. There are at least three people now that are looking for this play. It's Spike. Harris gets a little help from Aaron Kyle on the outside, and 23's did a lot of it. Randy Hughes got the hand on it, and it was he who deflected it. That's Cliff Harris's first interception of the year, too. That's an amazing statistic. Dorsett and Newhouse then behind Roger Staubach as Drew Pearson started in motion and Newhouse takes the handoff. And Robert Newhouse struggles down to about the 20 before Gary Jeter stops him. Ernie Stotner talking to the defense. One single back or Brown for Mason. 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 Or See that the questions are asked by Dennis Thurman, answered by Stautner. We don't want to eavesdrop, but that's interesting. Yep. Yeah. It'll be second and three. Newhouse got seven. And now Laidlaw is the full guy. Dorset is the ball carrier. Dorset down inside the 15. Brad Van Pelt on the tackle, but Dorset got a Dallas first down. Pittsburgh picking up where they were last week. It's Brad shot at Johnny Stallworth. 11-yard TD pass. Now watch Dupre, number 89, go out and take Van Horn on. Dupre is a great blocking tight end. Van Horn makes the tackle with bad ribs. I wonder if this hurt him. Line of scrimmage, the giant 14. Tony Dorsett with an impressive year. Had a struggle last week. And now Newhouse picking a hole goes inside the 10 to about the 9 where he is cracked by Brian Kelly. Yes, Newhouse has been the enigma, if I can say that, of the team because he had a great opening game against St. Louis. He had 109 yards. Now he's limping again a little bit. He's taken so many bumps and bruises. Uh, I wonder how long Robert can continue to do that. He got four yards on that carry, so make it second and six. Ball just outside the 10-yard line. No score as yet. 150 left in the first quarter. Roger Stallman. Heisman Trophy winner. Gibbs on the inside hand off to Dorsett. He cannot get outside. John Mendenhall again. What a game. What a play by 64. There are a lot of nose people. Charlie Johnson with the Eagles. They're really fast, but watch this move. Fitzgerald even tries to cut him. He leapfrogs that and catches Dorsett from behind by the foot. That's a great play. He only got a yard. And so it'll be third and five. Springs has entered. Ball back 
uh, does not operate this time in the shotgun. He's got four set and springs behind him. Looking for Drew Pearson, and he can't get it. Terry Jackson. Wow, good coverage. Here's a guy that used to be uh, on the Giants like a drum, Drew Pearson. It's a quick slam. Once in a while, Terry Jackson plays receivers too close and gets the interference call. This is an incredibly good play in the end zone. A lot of guts here. Yeah. You're looking right into Staubach now. Ball is thrown pretty well. This is just good defense right here. Get on it. Good play. Staubach never took his eyes off the man he was going to. Drew Pearson. And Raphael set the end with Danny White holding. Will go from about 27 yards. Will put the first points on the board. He's perfect from this distance. And he still is. Dallas three. The Giants nothing. As the referee Jerry Mark Bright gives you that indication. Indication. So at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, the Dallas Cowboys break on top. If you can call it that, three nothing. Bearing from Maine to Malibu, but I don't let her go nowhere without the treatment. This is no car, this is a legend. And you better believe I give her the treatment. STP oil treatment. Since 1964, over half a billion cans have been sold. No other brand even comes close. So do what millions do. Give your car the treatment from STP. This sweetheart gets a treat, and this sweetheart gets the treatment. That your dad? Uh -huh. What's he doing? Selling insurance. Oh, what kind? Nationwide. Why? Because he likes to sell good stuff. Oh. My mom's a nationwide agent, too. Really? She likes to help people. Well, nationwide agents like to offer blanket protection for people's lives, health, homes, cars, businesses. He cooks good hot dogs, too. <laughs> and they cook good hot dogs, too. Nationwide is on your Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see the heavyweights in action in the World Powerlifting Championships, plus part two of the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders and the conclusion of the World Series of Poker. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, followed by Archie Bunker's place one day at a time, Alice and the Jeffersons. New edition of 60 Minutes. CBS News Weekly Magazine. Raphael Septian will kick off for Dallas. He just hit a 27-yard field goal to make it 3-0 Cowboys. Bobby Hammond standing back at the giant goal line. I have not yet figured out what the holdup is. Something wrong with the communications, uh, we understand, on the benches. Have you ever seen a better day, though, for what we consider to be an outstanding football game? It was perfect. Couldn't be better. Not much wind. It's Hammond. Hammond is taken down by Aaron Mitchell. Good open field tackle. 3-0 Dallas with 48 seconds left in the first quarter. Tampa Bay 7-0 over Atlanta. That's a Ricky Bell one-yard touchdown for John McKay. Cleveland is now uh, leading Philadelphia. That's a Brian Seif to Reggie Rucker 21-yard touchdown pass. Cleveland's tough, too. I think it puts some points on the board. And they gain a lot of yards. Here's Billy Taylor banging off the right side and spinning for about four. Bob Brunig took him down. The great thing about the Giants, four wins in a row, they've all been different. Uh, against Tampa, uh, Taylor had 148 yards rushing. Then they steal a fumble to beat Kansas City. They went out and just played a good physical game against the Rams and whipped them. And uh, uh, you, they find a different way to win. But to do that against Dallas, I think you have to legitimately put points on the board from the line of scrimmage. I don't think you can steal them from that. Second and seven. I don't think so either. Gary Shirt, the tight end on the left. As Doug Coder tried to get the adequate yards for a first down and did not come near. 
talked to Jerry Tubbs about Guy Brown starting in place of Henderson at that linebacking spot. And all he said was if he doesn't worry too much, he can play with anybody. He surely is a fine looking athlete. He's got some big shoes to fill. Dallas 3-0 over New York. Sorry. I said we are not interested in their proposal. <sighs> the meeting is next Thursday, Bill. 60 long terms out of September. Fredericks, are you listening to me? Uh, if there's one thing you should remember about this deal, not knowing how to listen has cost American business billions of dollars. Well, as one of the world's major corporations, we at Sperry are doing something about it. We've set up extensive listening programs that Sperry employees worldwide can take part in. And when you do business with Sperry Univac or any of our other divisions, you're going to discover that Sperry listens like no one you've ever done business with. I said 8,000. No, no. Sperry, we understand how important it is to listen. Is luxury obsolete? Not at all. It's here in Lincoln Continental, 1980. All the traditional look and feel of luxury driving. Now, with a dramatic 41% increase in EPA estimated miles per gallon over last year. And a standard equipment, an ingenious new automatic overdrive transmission. Lincoln Continental, 1980. Town car and town coupe. Second field goal for Mickemeyer, a 40-yarder, and Buffalo's up. Third and three, and look on the left side of the Dallas defensive line at number 78. That is John Dutton. And he is like a house. That's how big he is. Third and three. is successful and Billy Taylor gets a giant first down before Guy Brown makes the tackle. Remember now that young Taylor got 148 against Tampa because the outside men over rushed and over stunted and this time Dutton came early and by and the inside trap play by the guard I believe it was Benson from the tackle spot trapping down inside that did such a good job. It's hard to fool these guys. Dutton is out and the veteran Larry Cole is back in. Stalls number 65 next to him as Sims is going to throw and does has a man open and Billy Taylor flipped down got back up. You know where this young man spends most of his time over at Perkins's house for <laughs> the coach. I understand he gets a pizza and goes over there every night and they just talk football and the way he reads coverages for a rookie I would have to think Perkins is working a lot with his young quarterback. Showing results, but it doesn't sound very exciting. Well, anchovies one night, pepperoni the next, you know. Second four to 42. Dallas leads 3 0. And they flex that defense again. Cole back off the line of scrimmage. The stalls right up on it. And Billy Taylor finds some running room, and Cliff Harris finally makes the tackle. A sluggish looking play when it began, but it developed. And a substantial gain. First down, Giants. Watch the good block by number 74, Tom Neville, to the right. He gets outside, cuts Larry Cole down with a great bit of footwork, and Taylor cuts it back inside. Of course, Taylor never had a chance to realize his great potential until that Tampa Day, uh, day against Tampa. Looks to me like he's feeling his oats now. He has been waiting for a chance. The young man from Texas Tech, eight carries, 34 yards. Doug Coder is in the backfield with him. He stopped by Randy Hughes, but a first down for the Giants. And watch, watch young Sim stay in the pocket now. To the left of your screen, Harvey Martin puts on a late rush. Here's the fake inside. Watch Sim stay there, not look too much at number 79, which is rather a frightening sight. Maybe that ball was delivered. Could have been thrown any better. And if it hadn't been perfect, it might have been picked off. First down. At the Dallas 40. The Cowboys lead the Giants 3 0. 
And Billy Taylor again straight ahead for good wow. yardage. Bob Brunig on the bottom of the tackling pile. But watch him drive him back. All right, this time in the flex, they drive right at the bubble. Clack and Van Horn work on Randy White and Harvey Martin cutting off that stunt. And Brunig just gets into the flow and can't stop the thing. That's a good power driving play. Good enough for five yards. Line of scrimmage will be now the 35. Second down. Doug Coder this time gets the call. You get down to about the 31 or 32. Not enough for a first down, but enough to make it third and short. Randy White and Larry Cole, the tacklers. Now you're looking at Jeter talking to coaches on the sidelines, at big number 70. But you know, actually, Dallas, while playing good defense, especially on the scoreboard, they have allowed quite a bit per rush. It looks like the Giants may have decided, well, we can keep the ball and rush the football a little bit. At least the uh, Starbucks offense won't have the ball a lot. Pittsburgh now tied. John Riggins from four yards out. Boy, I'll tell you, Party is doing miracles. Billy Taylor in motion, and Sims is going to put it up if he has time. And he does. Perkins, touchdown, Giants. A 32 yard touchdown pass from Phil Sims to Johnny Perkins. Again, watch number 11 set those feet. He's got a great strong arm. He hit Gray with one against the win against Kansas City. The ball is hanging a little bit. Perkins makes a great catch and beats Randy Hughes in the end zone. Right between Randy Hughes and Cliff Harris. And a good run after he caught it. 6-3. Joe Danello hits the extra point. Randy Dean was the holder. And the Giants lead 7-3. A fourth touchdown pass for Perkins and might be the biggest one he's ever made up here. Second quarter. The new pension laws were driving me crazy, so I called the Connecticut general people. And did they come through for me? Coming through for you. That's what CG people do. We had some dental bills. Then my company got a Connecticut general group dental plan. CG sure came through for us. Coming through for you. That's what CG people do. Call us. We'll come through for you, too. Take care of your car at Kmart. Our automotive service centers care. Your Kmart Automotive Center is your sound shop, too. Save $30 on this AM FM push button radio with 8 track or cassette tape player. On sale for $118.88. Match it with a pair of great sounding 5 inch or 6 by 9 three way speakers. Just $39.88 a pair at Kmart Automotive Centers across the U.S., where quality car products are Kmart priced. The giant drive, nine plays. They went 75 yards. They kept the ball five minutes and 14 seconds. And the offensive line really goes to work for young Sims, don't they? They are battling for him. What is this crazy looking running formation? Did you have these under Jim Lee Howe here with the Giants? This no, I don't kickoff? know what that is. The coaches' uh, communications, we are told, are malfunctioning, and that's the reason for this delay. CBS Sports Spectacular, next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, has the World Powerlifting Championships. And the battle of the NFL cheerleaders, and that's the one series I would like to have done. That's and the way life, life is, I guess. They're skating next week, I think. I certainly hope so. The World Series of Poker. I would have liked to have done that. I'd like to have won. One time in Vegas, win anything. Steve Wilson and Ron Springs stand back deep for Dallas. I Joe Danello doing a split there for... Are both coaches, are their phones out on both sides? Is it... Uh... I, I don't know that. Maybe ITT is trying to take over the league. Least whichever phones are down. 
Danilo with his group around him. <laughs> well, watch them go in motion. This is the old floating offensive kickoff. Line drive from Danilo goes in the direction of Ron Springs. A dangerous runner. Springs out of bounds. The flag is down at about the 40 yard line. But Springs got out of bounds about the 38. A little fracas on the far sideline. I don't think the Giant fans here at the stadium will mind that a bit. It's been a long time since the, somebody in the blue uniform has taken it to the other people. Hit it a lick. The Cowboys have beaten the Giants nine straight times. Flipping. First penalty of the game so far. A little fracas on the other sideline was unpenalized. Roger Staubach, by the way, is personal foul. And one. Blocking below the waist, number 54 on the run back. First down. 54, of course, is Randy White. Roger Staubach, I started to stay and say, is 14 and one against the Giants. There's Larry. There's Randy right there, and he is mad. Sitting alongside Larry Cole. Giants lead 7-3 with 10-33 left to play in the first half. Salvi in motion. Almost lost it. Almost looked like he might want to give it back to Roger Staubach. Brad Van Pelt on the tackle. Well, Pat said it. Watch Jay Saldi come back and try to trap Mendenhall, but Mendenhall's penetration was so good he kicked the ball loose. And only a great athlete like Dorsett comes out alive. Good penetration by the nose man. They had Fitzgerald and Saldi trying to block him, and he beat them both. Would you say something to Mendenhall before the game? He really wants to play. He really does. Two-yard loss. Cowboys are lucky they still have the football. Second and 12, Mendenhall after him again. Jeter with a good play this time. Mendenhall was all over the top of Roger Staubach. Peter did the job on the outside. I think the crowd has a definite edge for this game. I think that the New York fans came out to watch this team and really cheer has a big edge right now for New York. Look at this play by Jeter. They're being appreciated. There's nothing like that for a pro athlete. More than money is appreciation. I'll tell you what, there are a lot of arguments you hear about what is the best sports town in the country. But I'll tell you what, also, there are no better sports fans, no better football fans than these Giant fans have been over the years. Tom Landry knows that. He played in front of them, too. On the shotgun. All back with all kinds of time throws for Drew Pearson and oh. got him. And Drew held on. And he really took a couple of shots on the way down. I love the way he goes back to the huddle number 88. That's his 30th catch of the year. Always one of the high average fellows, but forget stats. He catches the ball and gets hit. Watch him give himself up. No pass rush, folks. Even with eight men deep, you're not going to cover Drew coming across. That is class. And go back to the huddle like nobody touched you. Did you read what he said after the game in Pittsburgh last week? What did he say? When he caught five passes, he said, you know you're going to get hit. You might as well not worry about that. You might as well just concentrate on catching it. Good advice. First down, Dallas, and the handoff is to Newhouse, and he might get two or three, but no more. Mendon Hall again, and Dan Lloyd on the tackle. By Newhouse. Lloyd has really done a job playing the 34. Uh, we saw him earlier in the year against New Orleans playing defensive end, defensive tackle on the old four-man line, and now he's found that inside linebacking spot's good. He goes out right now. It'll be second and nine for Dallas. Dan Lloyd is one of those guys who just likes to run into the stadium whatever this is Matt Barr's 21 yard field goal and the Steelers are on top of Washington early Giants now go to a four man front two man rush as Drew Pearson goes in motion and Starbuck is safe down he goes George Martin nobody blocked him of course the premise was that the fake would take Martin out. Watch the left part of your screen. They pull the offensive right tackle down, Cooper, and Martin should follow that to the inside, but Martin is a great outside rusher and a very good athlete. He used to be a darn good basketball player. He caught Roger that time. Third and 18. Both Tony Hill and Drew Pearson. 
Pearson split wide to the left and Ron Springs is also flanked left. Now he shifts back into the backfield. Draw back, back in the shotgun. The Giants do not blitz a lot. The 30-second clock expired, and Dallas will have five more walked off against him. And every time that happens, the crowd stands to its feet. Wonder how big a play that is emotionally to have to go in and recall a play. Play of game, number 12, offense, third down. Contending teams are supposed to make mistakes once in a while, but Super Bowl teams are supposed to get the play called and get it off. Tom Landry is about as upset as you'll ever see him get. After that delay of game, and now third and 23 it is. They take a blitz, but they don't come. Three man rush. Draw back. Pearson. Shy of the first down, Ray Rhodes on the coverage, and Dallas will have to punt. Danny White enters. 6.52 left. First half. Giants seven. Cowboys three. A standing ovation now for the Giant defense. How long has that been between ovations for them, huh? Since Yankee Stadium. Sounds good here. That's a great football stadium here, though, you it's know? It's one it? of the best, if not the best. What did Tom Landry say about Danny White throwing the pass last week? said he had discussed it with him and he doesn't think he'll do it again. <laughs> Good high kick and Hammond up to the third kick signal does just that at his own 15. 42 yard kick by Danny White but the Giants own the lead in this game at the moment. They lead the Dallas Cowboys 7-3. When you have questions like these about your money, get professional answers. I just got a great new job and a new apartment, but I need so many things. How do I establish credit? With the kids out of school, our savings are beginning to grow. But should we keep it all in a savings account? What else can we do? Keep your checking and savings at a full-service bank and get professional answers to your financial questions. America's full-service banks. We've got the answers. From the beginning, Continental Mark has been one of the highest forms of automotive expression. Now there's a new mark, Continental Mark 6, with a remarkable 41% improvement in EPA estimated miles per gallon over last year, with a new automatic overdrive transmission, with even more room inside than last year. And now there's yet another new mark, the Mark 6 four-door. Continental Mark 6, still unmistakably marked. Live from Laurel, Maryland, see the 29th running of the Washington, D.C. International. Post time is 4 p.m. next Saturday. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Tom Landry, obviously very concerned at the moment about the developments here. Benny Barnes is out of the game, and Aaron Mitchell has taken his place. Barnes with that always bad foot. And Doug Coder pushes his way for four or five yards. Is he an amazing ball carrier, though? He had a fumble two years ago, a fumble last year. And so far this year, he has one fumble. That's in three seasons, folks. Little guy from Kentucky, and he doesn't overpower anybody. But I'll swear he does get in there, doesn't he? He's got five yards. The Giants got him from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sims gets to Taylor, and Taylor doesn't quite make it back to the line of scrimmage. Dave Stalls was the first man to hit him. He's not laughing. Just Dallas winning. and Dallas was anticipating the rush. They had the flex defense to that side. Here's the handoff to the on the second man on the eye. Now Young Sims is five of seven for 72. A very crucial play coming up. This pass play will tell you a lot about the young man, whether he's willing to just maybe get a first down by inches or if he's trying to go for the whole shoot match. He's going to have to face that huge hook on the left side of the defensive line. That's the person of John Dutton again. 78. Chase and 
Sims fires to the ground. Just as he was hit by Aaron Mitchell on the blitz. The blitz from the offside. Now the Dallas team has cut down to about 20 some odd percent blitzes. That's one out of five. But it's a good thing they did it. I have a feeling the young man had something zeroed in. And Mitchell's a darn good tackler. Good defensive play. And Dave Jennings. Back to punt for the Giants. Steve Wilson standing at his own 41-yard line for Dallas. Jennings. Ooh. Gets it well. Chases him back inside the 40. Wilson. Breaks a couple of tackles, but gets back to about the 44, 43-yard kick for Dave Jennings, which is exactly his average for the season. He leads the NFC as Keith Eck made the tackle. New York, 7, Dallas, 3. You survey where the land is wild and unforgiving, a land of hard, desolate beauty few men have seen filling in the empty places on maps that until now have been almost unknown. But when the sun retreats from the sky, you set your sights for Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you got the time, we've got the beer. Miller tastes too good to hurry through. When it's time to relax, uh, we've got the beer. Miller beer. Miller beer. Monday night on CBS, The White Shadow. Coach Reeves' team learns a hilarious lesson in humility from the Harlem Globetrotters. That's a good show with Kenny Howard, though, isn't it? That'll be followed by MASH and WKRP in Cincinnati. And then Monty Anderson in live and in color. Uh, and then gambling takes a special toll on Lou Grant. It's all on CBS Monday night. down with good protection going for Tony Hill. He's going to be out of bounds when the flag goes down. They're going to call Ray Rhodes for interference. It was an out and up. And Tony Hill, of course, had his first big day receiving in this league against Dallas in Dallas a year ago. He had two TDs and over 100 yards. Good pass blocking. Watch to the right of your screen. Donovan takes on Jeter. And then they pick up behind him. That's right. Defensive pass interference. Number 22. First down. All is against Ray Rhodes. Tony Hill is really getting bullish and strong, though, isn't he? He had a tough day against Pittsburgh last week, and Mel Blunt didn't catch a pass. 22 yards on that penalty. I used to hate to get the receiver that was shut out the week before, especially if he's a great one. Dallas at the Giant 35. Well, set. Comes for a couple. Brian Kelly got the hand on him. He first slowed him down. You know, receivers used to come out in the old days and try to con you. Like a Tony Hill would come out and be dragging a leg and barely able to walk. And in the first or third time they had you, man on man, they'd run right by you. But now they're all very honest people. It's really put the game in a much different light. Than just... What about cornerbacks? Are they all honest people? All dishonest. You had to be to play cornerback. Second and nine. Eight carries has picked up only 20 yards. Hill and Pearson both come left, and Dorsett goes in motion to the right. Yes. To the right side for just a couple, not much more. Dan Lloyd and John Mendenhall roll him to the ground. Newhouse coming off a two-yard rushing effort against Pittsburgh. And it's a crazy statistic floating around right now that teams that throw over 40 times a game in 28 games where this happened. They only won once, and the losses were 27. If you have to throw over 40 times, the odds are really against you winning the football game. How many times did Dallas throw last week? 42. The score was 14-3 Pittsburgh. Third down. Shotgun. Ball juggled a bit by Roger. Looking for some place to go. Threw it to Jay Salvey, and he dropped it. that 
Martin now is fighting blockers and getting to it. The thing is that this year, once the quarterback has released the ball, you better get away from him. Watch the left part of your screen. See where 75 comes from. He's going inside. That's Martin. He gets by Cooper. Oh, now he's away from Rafferty. Now Roger throws. Ah, he hit him in the back. I think it was a good call. Wasn't there a time, though, when you left that little zone, that five-yard area back there, that you lost that immunity? Well, if you become a ball carrier, you should. Personal foul. Looking the passer, number 75, defense. First down. I think Martin had a chance to hold up, uh, particularly since you're coming from the back. I really mean that. Now, you can't, you can't tell a guy not to rush the passer, and I don't blame him for being mad. Not the most popular call at Giant Stadium. 7-3, and then the Giants asking for quiet as Jay Salvi operates in front of Dorsett, and Dorsett gets around the corner. Ray Oldham knocks him out of bounds at the 15, or about the 10 make that. I don't know if Danny Reeves set down that play, but to run right at Martin after he's been called for that's a brilliant, brilliant play because Martin is hot, and they go around that left side, they catch him to the inside. I think Billy Joe Dupree comes in and walls him off. And, you know, instead of being aggressive, you can lose it by just getting hot. Sometimes you can just charge yourself right out of the play. Number 75 will zero in on it. Six-yard pickup for Dorset, make it second and four. They're at the 11. That's Laidlaw. Laidlaw banging down to about the two-yard line before Ray Rhodes makes the tackle. I don't know if that was a misdirection, if they decoyed or not. Looked like it was, and I noticed Donovan and Mendenhall almost slugged each other when it's over. Let's watch and see what happens. Now Scott went straight through and got a good block on Carson. Now watch at the end of this play. Donovan comes downfield, continuing a little bit longer, and there, there was almost some action. <laughs> Just straight ahead, zone blocking. Dallas has it first and goal. Just inside the two-yard line. The Cowboys trying to go back ahead. Salvi in motion. Hand off to Didn't make it. Hold them again. All right, if you want to play pro football, don't think about being a quarterback. Think about being a defensive lineman or an offensive lineman. I'm telling you, it's hell up there. And if you give a little guy the ball like Newhouse, it's hard on him, too. Here it is, folks. Carson, number 53, might be the best linebacker playing this in the league. About the one foot yard. One foot line. Less than a yard. Starbuck. Knocked back. There's Carson over the top. Don't try to come over the top against number 53. He'll hand you your head. Look at the line of scrimmage. The Giants looked like they were darn near offside they wanted so badly. Good motion by the inside defensive lineman. That's the location of the football, and you can see how far they have to go to score that touchdown. And we get the two-minute warning. Stadium's going crazy. As Staubach comes over to talk to Landry. Maybe he can calm him down. 7-3, Giants lead. Introducing the 1980 Mercury Marquis. Feel the Marquis ride. The Mercury Marquis is not only spacious and comfortable, it has 70% better gas mileage ratings than 1975. Feel the Marquis ride. The 1980 Mercury Marquis. Come feel how well it's designed. Feel the Marquis ride. If a man's favorite threads prematurely lose their threads and the seams in his slacks seem to disappear, then he needs clothes from Levi's Sportswear. Levi's slacks, blazers, and suits hold their great looks because they're sewn to the tough standards that made the Levi's name famous for durability. Men's clothes from Levi's Sportswear, where quality never goes out of style. 
Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see the heavyweights in action in the World Powerlifting Championships, plus part two of the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders and the conclusion of the World Series of Poker. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire at Giant Stadium. And it is Giant Stadium. Uh, how many times have they suffered through? Oh, there's a cowboy thing. The fans here have really earned the right to have some fun in the sun today, right? That cowboy fan doesn't have the best seat in the house. Gotta be careful, too. Way up top in the third deck. It's <laughs> third down, Cowboys. Or set a new house behind Roger Staubach. A new house. He lost Jordan. Dan Lloyd. Did you see the giant defense jump around? I have never seen them this fired up. Since Robustelli and Cat Cabbage were your defensive ends. A simple play and a simple answer to it. Boy, this is good football. Look at the penetration. There's Rhodes up the quarterback. And Lloyd came right through in, in the scene. Another angle. Enjoy it, folks. It's been a long time between goal line stands. Fourth and goal. He gets caught, but the ball is lobbed a little bit. He's dead. But this is what they pay off on. It wasn't. Great play. Intended for Doug Cosby, who stands about 6'6", but Harry Carson, with that superb quickness, got a hand up and knocked it away. And the Giants will operate from their own end zone with one minute, 11 seconds left to play first half. Both teams have all their timeouts left. Bit of breathing room. Aaron Mitchell on the tackle. Young man is very old beyond his years. Here's that giant bench, Bill Austin, and Perkins still has the headset on. They're all up. I don't see anybody doing any sitting over there in the sun, do you? Look at Mendenhall. Of course, this young man will give the ball probably to Coder for the next couple of plays and go in with a lead at halftime. Incredible. It'll be second and five. I am surprised that Dallas has not called a timeout by now. Seconds left to play in the first half. Sure, they'd like to make them kick from down there before halftime. Billy Taylor out to about the eight. And still, the clock runs. I think Dallas is in a little bit of a blue funk about not getting the touchdown. And now, now they have called a timeout. Finally. Okay. Long overdue. I, some of the great arguments are after you have not scored a touchdown on the sidelines after that. 7 3, the Giants lead. He was a man who never danced, never sang, never performed for an audience. Yet since 1891, his talent has thrilled millions. A little bit more to the left. All right, sir. His name was William Tuttle. His gift, architecture, and his masterpiece, Carnegie Hall. Perhaps the only music hall in the world where every person in the audience can hear every note no matter how softly it's played. Mr. Tuttle, we're about finished, sir. Mr. O'Reilly, here, you don't have to shout. The same commitment to perfect sound that went into building Carnegie Hall goes into every high fidelity component Pioneer makes. That's what's made Pioneer number one today with people who care about music. Pioneer, we bring it back alive. Sixteen seconds left to play in the first half. What's going on in that Philadelphia Cleveland game? Well, it's an important game because Dallas plays Philadelphia next Monday night. Philadelphia on top of Cleveland now in the second period. Wilbert Montgomery, a 62-yard touchdown. It'll be a third down situation. Maybe just a yard. Billy Taylor may have it. Harvey Martin, one of the Dallas tacklers. The indication is that they do have the first down, and now that'll probably do. 
first half action. Another standing ovation for this team. And listen to the crowd. The Giants head to the locker room, leading Dallas at the half, seven to three. Matt Gill set the end, got the 27 yard field goal for Dallas, and the Cowboys win three nothing. Bill Sims hit Johnny Perkins with a touchdown pass, and the Giants took the lead, and they have it, 7 3. For the 1980s, Lincoln Mercury unleashes a striking new cat. New Cougar XR7 with 64% better estimated MPG than 1975. And a new automatic overdrive transmission is available. So very luxurious with plush new fabrics. Cougar! More! Than ever! This is your year for the cat. To good friends. A toast. Here's to a vanishing breed. Bill Evans, bachelor. The end of a perfectly good ladies' man. <laughs> to Bill Evans, a free man. Thirteen more hours. <laughs> if you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Speech! 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 Come on, you guys. You're beautiful. Here they come, pouring in from California and Vermont, from Texas, Oklahoma, and Georgia, from all over the country, billions of used aluminum cans headed for recycling. Today, about one out of four aluminum cans is recycled and used again. Tomorrow, maybe one out of three. Someday, maybe every one of them. We can't wait, we can't wait for tomorrow. How cool can't wait. Next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, the heavyweights are in action when the CBS Sports Spectacular presents highlights of the World Powerlifting Championships. Plus, the second installment of the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders with 16 teams representing the NFC and AFC competing for the title. Then come with us to Las Vegas for highlights of the World Series of Poker. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger, and Al Harold Carmichael has the record for the Philadelphia Eagles. 106 games he has caught a pass, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are doing it again, this time against the Redskins. Here is Bradshaw with time looking for Grossman, and Grossman down at the 12-yard line. From there, the Steelers struck. It was John Stallworth with the first touchdown for the Steelers. They led Washington 7-0. Theismann. Drove the Redskins back down the field. Went to Ricky Thompson, who made a fantastic catch at the four. Then in the second period, John Riggins to the outside, swung in. But the Steelers came back, and it was Bradshaw looking for Benny Cunningham on the tight end screen. It is now 17-7, Steelers with the lead. And, of course, the game you're watching, what a great goal line stand by the Giants, who are trying to win for the fifth straight time. Tampa Bay leading Atlanta 7-3. Ricky Bell plunged in from a yard out. And the game, the highlights you just saw, 17-7 Pittsburgh with the lead over Washington. And the skins could be tied, but they'd have to come back. Now, Philadelphia leading Cleveland 13-10. Wilbert Montgomery ran 62 yards for a touchdown. That is the longest run of his career. Stipe went 21 yards to Rucker. That's the 19th touchdown pass of Sipe's season so far. New England trailing Buffalo 6-0. Two field goals by Nick Mickemeyer for the Bills in that game. Minnesota and St. Louis are just underway. They are scoreless. Cincinnati and Baltimore. Burt Jones back at quarterback. No score in the first. San Diego and Kansas City also scoreless. And that game is in the first. And Jane, you've got a story involving Irv. Yes, I do, Brent. When the great Dallas Cowboys arrived in New York late yesterday, CBS had a cassette of two tall Joneses bout ready for them to view. Irv Cross asked Cowboy General Manager Tex Schramm his reaction to Jones's debut. Well, it wasn't one of the great uh, fights of the century, I don't imagine, but I think a lot of people are today are overlooking the fact that it's a, uh, it was his first fight, just like a first fight of an amateur. And I think that the fact that he got through the sixth round, uh, there was a little kind of a stumble, I think, and a illegal hit at the end, but the fact that the judges and felt that he won the fight, it's uh, one step further for him on his new career. 
Tex, if Too Tall decided to come back to football with the Dallas Cowboys taken back? We would love nothing better than to have, we would love nothing better than to have Too Tall uh, come back to us. He left under the finest of circumstances. Before the draft, he came in and told us confidentially that he would not be back so that if that would make any difference, we could change our plans. Uh, he's been very complimentary to our football team, and uh, if the boxing does not ever work out for him, uh, he'll be very welcome with the Cowboys. Now back to the New York Giants. Young Phil Sims, their top draft choice out of Moorhead State. And, of course, quarterbacks are such a valuable commodity in the National Football League. Who are some of the top prospects coming out of college football this year? Not very many seniors. Mark Wilson at Brigham Young is rated number one by the Pro Scouts. He's 6'5", and he is extremely consistent. Number six, Mark Wilson of the unbeaten BYU Cougars with a sensational throwing arm. The only question is about his mobility. When they put the pressure on in the NFL, can Mark stand in there and throw touchdown passes like that one? And watch here. Rolling to the left, throws back to the right, and Wilson demonstrates why he's number one according to the Pro Scouts. Number two is a young man from Ohio State, only a sophomore, Art Schleister. That's how you pronounce his name. And he can run as well as he can pass. Watch Schleister's passing arm in action here for the unbeaten Buckeyes. Why, he's going to be a good one. Mark Malone of Arizona State is probably the best running quarterback coming out of college football this year. Malone for Arizona State is a senior. This is against Utah State. From the two-yard line, Malone found daylight, turned it on, and ran 98 yards for the touchdown. The quickest release belongs to Mark Herman at Purdue. He is a junior. Now watch here as Herman hits his receiver right now. What the pros like because there's so much pressure on the part of defenses in the NFL. The smartest of the quarterbacks is Paul McDonald out of USC. He will remind you a little bit of Ken Stabler. The scouts say that there is possibly one drawback. He might not have a strong enough arm. But there's no question that Paul McDonald has a marvelous throwing touch and hits his men just as they break. He is a senior like Malone and Wilson, and yesterday, there was a freshman who impressed everybody. His name is Danny Marino. He's out of Pittsburgh, but he may elect baseball over football. And the NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Teddy Kennedy. Will his past affect his future? A look at the public figure and the private man as CBS reports Teddy. Sunday at 10, 9 Central and Mountain. This is CBS. On the scoreboard, Fouts to Lord Jeff and San Diego now is ahead of Kansas City, 7 to nothing. Irv, show me some highlights from that Dallas Giants game. <laughs> okay, there's only one touchdown, of course, scored in the first half. The Giants got it, and they lead 7-3 at halftime. And Phil Sims, a young man we've been talking about all day, connected with, his, with Johnny Perkins on the only touchdown of the day. Sims here on a third and two in a Dallas 32, fades back under pressure. Hits Perkins right on the run there. He goes in at 7-3. One of the biggest plays of the game came on the goal line. Fourth and goal from the two. Roger Staubach faking a run here. 
throws to Cosby, and the ball is tipped by Harry Carson, and the New York Giants are ahead at halftime, 7-3. to three. Carson is inspired by that picture of Jane Kennedy, which hangs there in his locker over there at Giants Stadium. Another good young quarterback, and he's going to be in the playoffs, is Doug Williams of Tampa Bay. On the play fake, looking for Owens Long. Check that shotgun out. Cameraman can't even find it. He threw that ball so far. He was down at the one. Ricky Bell storm into that end zone. Pick up six for the Buccaneers. Now, watch Williams again. Hits Higgins. That's his favorite target right there. And when you know, Isaac cuffs it up. And here they came, the grits blitz. It was Pridemore. He is brought down, but they couldn't cash in a touchdown. That is 7-3 at the half. Tampa Bay is leading Atlanta. Let's send you back now to Pat and Tommy. What a second half that's going to be in the Meadowlands. Halftime at Giants Stadium, where the Giants lead the Dallas Cowboys 7 to 3. Another good half coming. I'd like to talk to you about the Sony Betamax and an incredible feature called Beta Scan. I'm Tom Williams, Sr., and if you know tennis, you know my son. Here's a cassette of his last championship match. Beta Scan lets me go fast forward in reverse, so I can skip the boring stuff like this long rally and stop when I come to the real exciting parts, like Tom Jr. here dashing onto the court to pick up the ball. Isn't Betamax terrific? It lets you see what you've been missing and miss what you don't want to see. It's from Sony, the one and only. I never worry about what brand name part my mechanic puts on my car. That doesn't make me a bad guy. I go to a professional mechanic I can trust, so I trust the parts he uses. He uses Mopar. It means nothing to me, but it means a lot to him. Mopar fits all American-made cars, foreign cars too, and they're used by professional mechanics all over the world. If the professional trusts Mopar, I trust Mopar. Does he make me happy? He makes it his business. Trust your car to Mopar. Hi, I'm Drew Pearson of the Dallas Cowboys. I learned a lot about football on a chalkboard, but where you really learn is on the field, making your own decisions. That's what growing up is all about, making decisions. You know, alcohol abuse is a real problem today. Part of the answer is helping young people make the right decisions about whether or not they want to drink. There's a free booklet that can help every teenager make decisions about drinking. Write ECS, Box 687, Denver, 80201. Be a winner. Hi, I'm Dave Jennings of the Giants. Teamwork is important in the NFL, and quality education requires teamwork, too. Learning takes place everywhere, in the school and in the community, all the time, at all ages. The leaders who will solve today's problems and tomorrow's challenges are in your school right now. Call your local school to find out how you can become an active member of the education team. Right, kids? For more information, write Box 57020, Washington, D.C. The preceding public service announcement was brought to you on behalf of the National Football League. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Lincoln Mercury and the exciting 1980 Cougar XR7. And by Olympus OM10. Great shots automatically. and this happy. And before the game, too, which I think had a, a big uh, input into why the Giants felt so bullish, uh, young Sims has looked at the Dallas defense now under third down situations, and I think done an incredibly good job. His touchdown pass uh, to Perkins was really smooth. What about the statistical situation? Well, I, you know, time of possession, Dallas had it. They didn't get the touchdown from in close, and I personally think the roughing the passer call, while mm -hmm. it was a good call, was probably the biggest uh, play uh, uh, against, perhaps, the... Uh, you know, keeping that thing alive and even getting it down to where they missed on that short thing. But you that need, is, if you're a good team, you've got to get the touchdown when you're down that close. That is the fourth time in the last three weeks that teams have had first and goal against the Giants that have come away with no points. And that's got to give you a big psychological lift. Now, Dallas's big scoring quarter is the second period, which is already passed. Mm -hmm. But they have so many quality people under this quality person. 
don't count them out and don't think, oh boy, we got the big upset until it's over. Uh, the Giants are going to have to earn every bit of it, and Dallas will make sure of that. If the second half is as good as the first half, we're in for a great afternoon of football at Giants Stadium. I can't believe it's going to be anything else because the Giants were the first team back out this time. And let's get out and pick up the action and see what's happening with Ray Perkins' group, who won four in a row. The longest winning streak in the NFL at the moment. And how long has it been since you've been able to say that? But it belonged to the Giants. Well, since 1970 was the last time they won five in a row. And the team that they happened to beat in the fifth week was the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. I was thinking about that win against uh, Los Angeles last week. The first time they've beaten the Rams since 1961. My gosh. At, at Yankee Stadium. Y. Tittle was the starting quarterback. Del Schaffner was the receiver. And Y. and Dell couldn't get it done. And a guy named Charlie Connolly came off the bench to bail it out. Well, that doesn't seem that unusual now that you mentioned it after all. Charlie was a great quarterback. I Tell picked you. an extra point in that game. You did? How so. many extra points? I don't remember the score. 21-10, I think. You had to get three of them, then. It's easier then. The goal post was on the goal line. <laughs> Intensity wise have you seen any fall off of the Cowboys. I think they played pretty good football. They just missed that touchdown from in close. Tom Landry said during the week uh, Tom Brookshire that he was afraid there might be a letdown after that loss last week to Pittsburgh that usually his team this particular team had a fall off in efficiency after a loss like that. We'll see. Cowboys haven't scored in eight quarters now. That's a lot. Touchdown. A touchdown. Since uh, the game against St. Louis, as Hammond operates from out of his own end zone. Operates outside the 20 to about the 22. Mike Hegman and Bruce Huther down to break the wedge. Crucial series for a young quarterback. Now watch what happens now. Aaron Mitchell and company come down. The Giants, though, here's Lloyd blocking high enough so it's not a call. Remember, anything below the waist is really a no-no. Pretty good coverage by the Cowboys. They got a lot of good people. Well, that was Mike Hegman, number 58. And the Giants operate with the same offensive lineup that went the entire first half. Perkins split wide to the right, Ernest Gray to the left. Coder and Taylor, the running backs. And Taylor, ended right at the line of scrimmage by Randy White. Opening play of third period means forget it the door is closed what a great tackle that time Taylor did a complete flip it's called a tuck one flip watch number 38 54 seems to be a little mad he spins into the hole all the way over he gets about a 9 5 in my card he beat a double team spun out of it the center and the guard Clack and Van Horn try to take him on and he beat them both Somebody must have said something to Randy at halftime again. He was still hot over the bad call, he thought, when he was picked on for clipping. And if you get this guy from Wilmington, Delaware, all heated up, by the fourth period, it's, it sounds like the express coming through the train station. Smoke comes out of those ear holes. He is tough, especially in the second half. The monster. <laughs> half man, half monster. for first on the scrimmage the giant 28 Sims Gray Benny Barnes slipped down Sims stayed cool but Randy White almost got him watch the left part of your screen Van Horn makes pretty good contact early and here comes that big bowling ball White almost gets through got to be careful with Gray and Perkins the giant receivers are 9 300 men you got to be careful Look at this action up front. They cut off the blitzing Mitchell, who was coming from the secondary. It's a pretty good offensive play, I'll tell you. Giants are cool. They get a first down at their own 40. Billy Taylor again. And Taylor gets good yardage, about five. Bob Brunig made the tackle. First down. It used to be hard to run against that Dallas defense, particularly on first down. That time, though, I noticed, and of course Perkins and his staff did, that they weren't in the flex. That time, they were in more of a, a mid-down type defense. The flex is gone on first down. 
Billy Taylor now 15 carries for 56 yards. Guy Brown on the left side, the linebacker in place of Thomas Henderson. There is that defense, and this time it is flexed. And Sims goes straight back. Hit by Randy White. The Giants got it back. Harvey Martin tried to pick it up. Couldn't find a handle. Billy Taylor made the recovery. Well, 54 hasn't slowed down since he came out for the second half. Center of your screen, watch him. He throws Van Horn aside, runs by Clack, runs through the back Taylor, and nails the quarterback and causes the fumble. And Harvey Martin was coming around the great circle route for the recovery. Woo! That's some effort on the line of scrimmage by White. Another one of those times when perhaps it might have been a wiser choice just to fall on it instead of trying to pick it up. Pittsburgh 24. Washington 7. Brad Shaw to Randy Grossman, the tight end for a touchdown. Sims back. White chases again. Sims runs. And wisely ducks his head and does the hook slide. And Randy Hughes made the tackle. Little pressure put on by a Dallas team that puts Randy White on the outside, plays a three-man rush. With a lot of people in that secondary that run like deer, and Sims was very smart in putting it away and coming back. Steve Wilson, uh, number 81, the deep man for Dallas, and Dave Jennings back to kick for the Giants, who lead 7 3. We're in the opening minutes of Ooh. quarter number three. Wilson in the sunshine will not get around the corner. Number 29 is Eddie Hicks, 43 yard kick by Jennings. And he hung it up there a long time. So we have 11 minutes and 14 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Oh. Dallas will have the ball at their own 32. They trail 7-3. American business is being taken over by revolutionaries. Revolutionary Savin copiers. Savin's advancing in New York, surrounding Dallas. Savin's winning over banks and brokerage houses. Why is big business going for Savin in a big way? Because Savins are fast, economical, and remarkably reliable. In fact, last year, Savin outplaced Xerox and IBM combined. So if you haven't noticed the revolution, you will. Savin, the revolutionary copiers that are winning over big business. Super automotive values from Sears. Now get the full power of the Sears 48 battery for a full $7 off its regular low price. Now on sale, the Sears 48, $47.99 with trade-in. You save $7. And now, America can save money on the best-selling steel-belted radial tire in Sears history. Get them now, and save yourself $28 to $60 on a set of four. At Sears, where America shops for value. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see the heavyweights in action in the World Powerlifting Championships, plus part two of the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders and the conclusion of the World Series of Poker. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. That summer all with Tom Brookshire at Giant Stadium. Ten, Dallas. Ron Springs is one set back and Tony Dorsett is the other. And Staubach goes on first down. Intended for Springs and he's knocked out of bounds. Good Beasley Reese. Good help for Reese deep as Van Horn went out and took the short zone. Here's the battle of the line of scrimmage. Mendenhall, the nose guard, who played so well, working against Fitzgerald. Big John this time really heads him off, gets help from Scott. And Roger throws his tenth pass. They rushed the Cowboys did for 20 times in the first half. And we'll watch that ratio very closely. That's a Steve Little 42-yard field goal. The Cardinals draw first blood. Baltimore 7-0 over Cincinnati. Touchdown pass for Burt Jones. Staubach to Newhouse. Draw play. About five, Brian Kelly, the leading tackler. Pretty good call on second, second down. The draw, Newhouse now has, at the first half average, only two and a half yards a rush. That was his eighth carry. The Cowboys have got to get the ground game going. And one of their concerns is their lack of performance from the fullback position. On third and five, it'll be Springs. Back in the backfield with Staubach. Four wide receivers they have. 
Puts Johnson and Salvi both in the game, and the Giants put the rush on. Salvi, the intended receiver. And Staubach was wild to the right. Brad Van Pelt close to him, and the Giants hang on. Van Pelt ought to wear that black jacket to bed at night. Super job he just did then. He's a big enough guy and fast enough to cover almost man to man. That time it was a great play by the linebacker. The Cowboys, up until the last two weeks, who were so very successful in their third down conversions, are two out of nine today. And that won't do it. Danny White will not throw it, will he? Uh, let's see. Drive spiral hits at about the 21 and goes out of bounds. Right at that point. 45 yard kick for Danny White, who is in an individual battle with Dave Jennings for the conference leadership. If you think the thrill's gone out of driving, ease yourself into this. The 1980 Mercury Capri RS. Come on. Ease on down, ease on down the road. Ease on down with a sexy European look and great base engine mileage rating. Six or eight cylinder engines are also available, even an optional turbocharged engine. The Capri RS from Lincoln Mercury. A touch of Europe and a lot of American car. Ease on down, ease on down the road. To the sign of the cat. <laughs> Remember this when you choose an airline. American was first with computerized reservations to answer your calls faster. We were first with curbside baggage processing to handle your luggage faster. And we were first with one-stop check-in to get you through the airport faster. We're American Airlines, and finding ways to serve you better is one of the things we do best. We're American Airlines, doing what we do best. Tonight on CBS, start your evening with a brand new edition of 60 Minutes, CBS News Weekly Magazine. How about Archie Bunker? Doesn't he have a new cook at his place? And the cook is dishing out comedy. Oh, boy. The last continue on One Day at a Time, followed by Alice and the Jeffersons, and a special CBS reports, Teddy, the man and the politician. Tonight on CBS, Bill Sims, the quarterback, pitches back to Doug Coder. And Coder goes down. Billy Taylor got a good block out in front of him. Rudy made a great tackle on the outside. Enough penetration by the middle linebacker. Watch him right in the center of your screen. Go right through when he sees the guard pulling. Actually, it was the center pulling Clack. Coder had nowhere to go. In fact, that's the best thing that could happen to him. Get down early. Leading tackler on the Dallas team. That's only had three middle linebackers in their history, right? Only three. Second and 11. Cubs and Jordan. Bill Sims under fire again. He gets away from the rush. He is now getting away from everybody. Sims will have a first down. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Cliff Harris and Bob Brimick finally herded him out of bounds, but Bill Sims showing what an athlete he is. Well, he came, he came in with a scrambling five-and-a-half-yard average, so the 25-yarder is not unheard of. What is unheard of is where did the Dallas defense go once the pass failed to materialize? There's, there's Stalls goes by, gets a little bit on it. Now watch this. From now on, people should be saying, hey, it's run, run, run. Nobody showed up for a long time until Harris forced this young man sort of out of bounds, Ian Bruning. First down, Giants at their own 45. 9.26 left to play in third quarter. Giants lead 7-3. Big draw. Sims steps up. Sims again evades the rush. It's Gary Shirt. And Shirt slips down. Randy Hughes makes sure he stays, but another first down giant. Dallas is frustrated because that time they broke down the giant blocking but didn't get the quarterback again. What's the left part of your screen? Randy White and Van Horn, that's a standoff. Cole makes a pretty good run, forces him up. Well, that time, Harvey Martin just missed from behind, and the throw is coolly done and not overthrown. And right there, the edges of the field are a little bit wet and a little bit slick because of yesterday's rain. San Diego 10, Kansas City nothing. 31-yard field goal by Mike Wood for the Chargers. In motion, Johnny Perkins. Handoff is to Taylor, a couple up the middle. 
Larry Cole led the defense again. Matt Sims is 7 of 10 now for 104 yards. One touchdown, one interception. But right now the Cowboys are playing with lightning in a bottle because the speed outside that this Giants team has when they're fired up like that can beat you and burn you. Very careful time for the secondary. Gary Jeter over on the sideline enjoying this day. Second and eight for Phil Sims, the rookie from Moorhead State. Draft choice number one. Billy Taylor dives over to about the 25 30. Let's make it. Pretty good call. That time the safety blitz by Harris saw the Giants trapped inside. They almost broke Taylor up the middle. You might recall the Super Bowl when Frank O'Hara scored on that play. Good recovery by the Dallas defense. That'll make it third and five for the Giants. Larry Cole, the leading tackler on that last play. Brad Van Pelt over on the sideline, black jacket and all. Perkins hurried and he had to throw it out of bounds. Benny Barnes on the coverage. What football he's been playing of late. Two safety blitzes in a row. Watch number 43 come into your screen. There's Aaron Mitchell playing linebacker on the prevent. Everybody storms in there. You can see Harris got the number 11's ribs, but like Two Tall Jones yesterday in the fight, he didn't knock him out or down. <laughs> Joe Danello will go from 48 yards out. Randy Dean will hold. Danello had a 49 and a 31 yarder against the Rams a week ago. He's got plenty of strength to get it there. And he does. And just barely wide to the right. Not good. And the score remains. 7 3 Giants. The line of scrimmage will be the 30 when the Dallas Cowboys take over. I'm Cheryl Teague. I feel at home in front of the camera. But behind the camera, I don't know the difference between a lens opening and a Broadway opening. So I rely on my Olympus OM-10. My trusty OM-10 gets great shots automatically. My OM-10 has a smart little red light that tells me when it's okay to shoot. Oh, it's okay to shoot. Hold it, Bella! <laughs> With Olympus OM-10, great shot, automatically. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Ladies and gentlemen, protect your engines. The same way 31 out of 35 of this year's Indy 500 drivers do in their everyday driving with Valvoline motor oil. Because stop and go driving can punish your engine as much as 500 miles of speedway driving can punish an Indy car's engine. And Valvoline can take the heat, protects your engine, helps make it last. Ladies and gentlemen, protect your engines with Valvoline. It's not just for winning races. Live from Laurel, Maryland, see the 29th running of the Washington, D.C. International. Post time is 4 p.m. next Saturday. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Five-yard touchdown pass broken to Horace Ivory, and the point after touchdown was blocked. First down, Dallas. Lead 7 3. The handoff is to Dorset. Dorset bounces off a couple of tacklers, but the pursuit led by Beasley Reese is more than adequate. Carson did a great job, number 53, of stripping the defense. Ooh, yes. Pretty good play. Good blocking on the outside by Donovan. But Harry Carson came through and took Rafferty and Newhouse and stripped the play. And Reese made sure. That's not easy either. Wow, Mendenhall a little bit late. And over the top, those are four mobile good linebackers the Giants present to you. Second and 13, Scott Laidlaw in the backfield with Dorset. Three man again, and Dallas is illegally in motion. Flags go down. Confusion over on the right side. Number 61, I believe, uh, jumped a little bit. Big offensive tackle. Six 
14 left third quarter. Roger doesn't seem to mind the crisis. Ball start, number 61, offense, second down. Voice of the referee, Jerry Mark Bright. Second and 18, and Ron Springs, number 20, brings the play in for Roger Staubach. Yeah, he's a good pass receiver, and that's what Lloyd and Carson might be talking about right now. Tony Hill splits wide to the left, Drew Pearson to the right. The throw is to Dorsett. Dorsett. Turtles up to about the 34-yard line. Gary Jeter in good pursuit and a good tackle. Some play by Lloyd, number 54. Look at him. He's up in the line on the left part. Watch this. He'll fake. Fakes the draw. Clears that. Now watch him go all the way over and make a good tackle. Good block here by Scott. Watch this play by Lloyd. Long way to go for an inside linebacker. Good pressure by George Martin. Third and seven. Another one of those third and long situations for Dallas and again they operate from the shotgun Tony Hill with his first reception in two weeks has a Dallas first down Beasley Reese took him to the turf artificial turf it is big battle on the line of scrimmage and Mendenhall that time was really handled by Fitzgerald a good pass by Roger What's the battle now as Fitzgerald sets up on 64, gets some help, dumps him, and gets the ball off to Hill. What's the blocking now? Fitzgerald straightens him up. Scott will be looking because Mendenhall has been in their side the whole time. As Jay Salvi, who came in to help out on the blocking, first down Dallas. At their own 42, they trail. Green back to Laidlaw. Looking for some place to go. Bounces off one tackler. Gets to midfield. Harry Carson reacted quickly. This whole series smells like Ermel Allen and Reeves upstairs. Okay, they're in the 34. They're not really accustomed to it. Let's screen one way or fake screens and do into a draw screen series. And that's what we've seen now since they've been moving the ball. If we're going to run around, we'll run you out of position and sort of sneak in behind you a little bit. And it stands to reason if you're just going to rush three and drop eight, you're not going to beat him with a home run, are you? Or set back in the tail end of the eye tandem. He gets the pitch out. Mendenhall met him first. Very important. Notice how many people in the big blue jerseys are still on their feet when the tackle is made. You count them. Martin gets taken to the inside, but there's one, Mendenhall. There's Kelly, the linebacker. Jeter. A lot of people have not been cut down. Look at what Dorsett has done. 42 yards on 11 carries for Dorsett. Set has the Dallas first down, just manages to hang on as he's hit. And maybe Dorsett needs a flag jacket. Tell you one thing, that's a tough catch. The ribs are aching. He's another one, though, that takes a lot of taunting and a lot of scratching to get the ball away from him. Even some tough hits, like last week when he ran into young Johnson. Johnson isn't playing this week, and Dorsett is. Watch this play. And Roger is really zeroing him in, too. He's not being soft with it. Van Pelt weighs 235. He used to be a safety man in college. Double tight end situation. Here comes Drew in motion. The fake. Starbuck looking for some place to go. Jeter chasing. Can't get him. Starbuck goes down. And a flag goes with him. George Martin. They hit. And the violation will again be against George, I believe. And he's got the flag. I tell you, he's got a right to be mad, too. I haven't seen the replay either, folks, but I don't think this was a good call. The other one I thought was. Watch number Jeter, number 70 now, will turn the play back in. That's the way he should. Roger is still a great athlete on his feet. Now let's see what happens. First of all, there's a late spear on the left side. 
Scott Morton, I beg your pardon. It was Dan Lloyd, 54. Lloyd was late, but Martin was right on. Cowboys have the first down now with two minutes and 22 seconds left. Third quarter. But the Giants still lead 7 3. And as the seconds tick away, you wonder about whether or not the Cowboys should have gone for a field goal instead of a touchdown in those closing minutes at half number one. Hindsight is always good, isn't it? Drawback <laughs> is going to take off, and he slides down to about the 12. Harry Carson made sure he stayed there, but Roger, again, as Tom Brookshire pointed out a minute ago, still is a marvelous athlete. Now I'm telling you, he's been hurt. As you know, uh, last week against Pittsburgh, he was hit in a very vulnerable position, uh, plus being hit on the knee, and he continues when everybody was closed up. Instead of running out of bounds, he turned it inside, and I think made a remarkable run of it. Couldn't find anybody open. Scrambled for the first down at the giant 12. Again, the violation appeared to be on the right side of the offensive line. I think it was Jim Cooper again, the young tackle who's done such a heck of a job for Landry. 67. He called Pat Donovan. Let's see who moves. Yep, Donovan moved. Remember, the defensive players can move and stun around. They don't have to be as legitimate as those on offense. And so it'll be first and 15. Fourteen nothing, Baltimore over Cincinnati. Joe Washington's on a bench, a six-yard touchdown run for the Baltimore Colts. Baltimore has come to life. Looks like they're going to stay in Baltimore. Dorsett gets the handoff. George Martin, another good play, and also Dan Roy. The wind and home. The whole defense. Looks to me like the Giants have a new computer. Watch this play. Watch the left of your screen. Martin takes the inside and gets away with it. And beats Cooper across the line of scrimmage like he knew that play was coming in that particular situation. Jim Cooper's having a tough time with George Martin. So it's second down. 18 yards. They need for a first. The line of scrimmage to 20. Better get Tony Hill. The goal line by Drew Pearson and drop. Incomplete. He couldn't hang on. Right on the goal line. Pearson had it once, maybe twice. What a great leaping catch that time. Take a look at the three-man rush. Eight people deep. Roger gets away from Jeter. Donovan handled him. Here's the throw, and it's really rifle. It's once, twice, three times. That was close to a reception. Terry Jackson and Ray Oldham wrapped around him, and then Harry Carson arrived to make sure. How many times you ever see Pearson knocked away from a ball that he really has since put away? Not very often. Not often at all. And Dallas now faces a third down situation. All the wide receivers in the game, including Butch Johnson. And they operate from the shotgun with good protection. High over the head, intended for Drew. And Raphael Septien will enter. Beasley Reese, Ray Rhodes on the cover. We've all done this, but we either overstrike the golf ball or overthrow the football. And Roger just flies the elbow and sails this right into the end zone. This is pretty well covered anyway. Standing ovation again for the giant defense. Nobach and Landry. Not happy. It will be 37 yards away for Raphael Septian with Danny White holding. He's 9 of 10 up to the 40 yard line. Snap is good. The hold looks good. And the kick is too. 7 6. The Giants lead with 31 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And fans. This is a good football game. 
Meet the family of high mileage 1980 Mercuries, Zephyr, Bobcat, Capri. Come on in. He's on down, he's on down the road. He's on down with the high mileage ratings of Mercury Bobcat, one of America's lowest sticker prices. Zephyr, great mileage ratings with a lot of room for the money. Or Capri, mileage with a sexy European look. He's on down, he's on down the road. Meet the high mileage Mercuries at the sign of the cat. Some guys never learn. They're still taking it on the chin. Gotcha. Norelco offers the Norelco Rotary Razor. Not one or two blades, but 36 blades. Inside, three adjustable floating heads. And a unique shaving angle for a very close shave without a nick or cut. So, say hello to the Norelco Rotary Razor. And say goodbye to Gotcha. Raphael Septien was the end of that drive with a 37-yard field goal. Number one is about to kick off. Cowboys had the ball for six and a half minutes. Referee in motion. I believe the wind is right into the, the face of the Dallas kicker, isn't it? Let's see. Pretty good kick. Bobby Hammond will field it at the four. Hammond looking for some place to go. A couple of good blocks by the Giants. But Larry Bethea makes the tackle. The CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time features the World Powerlifting Championships and the, that show that you want to do, the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders. Well, the Powerlifting Championship sounds like something I usually would do. And the World Series of Poker. Something I probably should have done better in my days, yes. Maybe uh, when you get one of those shows, you'll take me with you. <laughs> All right. Ball at their own 20 yard line. And off is straight ahead of Duck Coder. And perhaps the line of scrimmage before Randy White. Watch him operate. Number 54 sort of set the tone for Dallas in his second half. It's if we don't want to hit, fellas, we're going to lose. There's the cut block by Van Horn. And Randy White is so strong. Oh, man, does he work on the ball carrier? It'll be second and nine. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants seven, Dallas six. We now pause for a word from your local station. Monday on the White Shadow, it's one super mismatch. Carver High against the Harlem Globetrotters. Don't miss the White Shadow, Monday at 8, 7 central. This is CBS. Monday on the White Shadow. We ought to charge admission. A winning streak goes to Carver High's head. So Coach Reeves cooks up something special to bring them back down to earth. See the Harlem Globetrotters work their magic on the White Shadow. Monday at 8, 7 Central the Mountain. Hello there. Bradshaw to Stallworth, 65 yards. The fourth touchdown pass for the Steelers quarterback. Kenny Anderson, a 67-yarder to Isaac Curtis, that the Bengals aren't dead. Just looking at John Dutton standing over on the sideline a minute ago. What did you think of the, the professional pugilistic debut of Ed Tutal Jones yesterday? You mean out in Las Cruces? Yes. Well, we had a bigger fight than that when our Roswell High played Las Cruces High once when I was a young, young person type. You played against Las Cruces? Oh, yes. The Apodaca brothers used to drive us nuts. <laughs> Where are they now? They can kick with either foot. Second down for Giants. Cowboys have a mix-up in their secondary. Sims looking for some place to go. And with lots of time, finds or tries to find Doug Coder, who is covered by Mike Hickman. Aaron Kyle and Randy Hughes collided in the Dallas secondary and knocked each other down. Talk about some good coverage, though. They had everybody blanketed, and this is where a young quarterback must not revert and start forcing throws. Pretty good pass protection. Two people on Harvey Martin. Randy White's being sort of screened off. Cole is operating. Now, watch this. Don't throw this ball. Doug Coder, the intended receiver. Third and nine situation. And watch 
for a blitz coming now. Ryan Brown lined up close to the line of scrimmage. Fakes a blitz, doesn't come. It looks like there was a flag on the field, but that's not. That's a balloon. And that'll be shy of a first down. It's like those strange things you saw over in Pittsburgh last week. Uh, I've been invited to join some UFO clubs because of those <laughs> shiny things. I never did figure out what they were. Looks like Randy Hughes might be shaken up a little bit. There goes that yellow balloon blowing by. That should be illegal. This looks like a leg job that Cowboys can not afford to lose number 42. There's Dave Jennings. Stopped by to say hello last night. He's also been having a little pressure put on him as he punts. He's a great punter, but he takes a little time. Dallas does a pretty good job of scouting. They may try to block one. Next week's regional games here on CBS, the Cardinals at Washington, Tampa Bay against Detroit, the Rams, Chicago, Minnesota, Green Bay, San Francisco, New Orleans, and Atlanta will be here against the Giants. Consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. And don't forget all the action begins with the NFL Today pregame show with Brent Musburger, Jane Kennedy, Herb Cross, Jimmy the Greek Snyder, and Jack Whittaker. <laughs> By the way, Hughes did walk off. You saw him walking off. Uh, he's another one of those academic All-Americans that's a pretty good professional football player. Took the place of Charlie Waters and has handled it well. Steve Wilson back for Dallas, Dave Jennings. Then come on to the Delco Freedom Battery Sale. AC Delco is making it possible for you to save on the powerful Never Add Water Delco Freedom Battery. At participating outlets, when you see the Delco Freedom Battery Sale poster. Thanks, Delco! When choosing between the phone and a business letter, remember, the letter is loaded with hidden costs. I see you. There's dictating time, typing time, filing costs, materials, even mailing costs. Sorting, sealing, stamping, and postage. To reduce those costs, don't reach for a stamp. Reach for the telephone. The phone's a better buy than the business letter. It was 72 yards from where Jennings kicked the ball to the end zone. I don't know if he had to run out on Muff or if uh, New York could have fallen on a Muff and gotten six points or not. Newhouse struggles out to the five. Brad Van Pelt on the tackle. Less than 14 minutes on the clock now, and the Giants lead 7-6. It's amazing, though, that Cowboys come in here with 100 and, what, 170 yards rushing per game. They had 76 yards rushing after three periods. This darn defense from that 34 has played very, very well. They have really put things uh, together in a solid way since they Kelly on the tackle. Defensive stand. Remember now, a good defense that works with a putter like Jennings can have you in bad field position half the afternoon if you don't take it and go on long drives. Lead Law comes out, Ron Springs goes in, Dupree comes out, and Dorsett comes out. 16 10, the Eagles over Cleveland. It'll be third and six, Dallas and Cheater asking for some support from this sellout crowd, none of whom have departed. You wouldn't expect him to. Martin jumps, but stays. Staubach from the shotgun. Lots and lots of time. Throws to Springs, and he'll have the first down. Some breathing room for Dallas. Brad Van Pelt, 
the giant who finally got there. Well, that rookie, the rookie from Ohio State is going to be some football player number 20. He is about Roger's fourth choice. You can see Saldi having trouble getting off the line. Roger, though, with a lot of time as five battle three. Ball is not thrown beautifully. Springs makes sure of the catch. He is really an outstanding receiver. set this time gets up the middle for three or four but again the hole is quickly closed Harry Carson slammed it Dorset unable to really shake in fact the, the whole year Dallas has been without that enormously big play uh, the longest run by Dorset has been like 41 this year and Rogers longest pass play is like 47 Dorset 14 carries just 25 yards. They shut him off. Dallas has difficulty running. They take a blitz. Strawback. Straight back. Caught. Tony Hill first down Dallas. Beautiful pattern. Number 80 just drove Rhodes off and then came back. Just enough to make the first down. Watch the left part of your screen. Let's see what kind of time against the three-man rush. No blitzing coming. And they're ganging up on Mendenhall, making sure Rafferty and Fitzgerald. Great comeback pattern. And you have to give number 80 some room or he'll run by you. The back of Jim Cooper. And the offensive huddle for Dallas. 7 6. The Giants lead the Cowboys. 11 13 left to play. Two field goals by Raphael Septien. All Dallas has been able to put on the scoreboard. Here's the reverse to Tony Hill. With a blocker in front, which is Herbert Scott. Another Dallas first down fumble. Picked off in midair by Kingsley Reese. And the Giants have it. That's the 13th fumble that Dallas has lost on offense. I think Lloyd made the contact to force the fumble, wasn't it? And Mendon Hall in on it. Here's the reverse to the left of your screen. Now watch Scott out in front. Good block here. But Hill was carrying that thing out of his forearm. Mendenhall, one of the tacklers who forced that fumble. That looks like it perhaps is Tony Hill that might be shaken up on the far side of the field. It is Tony holding his right thigh. Here's the fumble. He's carrying it loose. There it is. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. How are you holding up? I'm all right. You want to go for 10 miles? If you make it, I'll buy you a beer. If we make it, I'll buy you a long brow. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Tonight, let it be low and brow. When you get Sears Illuminized Muzzler for only $17.99, you also get the Muzzler Promise. Sears promises that the Muzzler will last as long as you own your American-made car. Or return it for refund or replacement free. And if Sears installed it, they'll install the new one free. Well, you can't beat that. I think it's fantastic. It's a great promise. Sounds like one heck of a good deal. The Muzzler, only $17.99. Installation and additional parts extra at Sears. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see the heavyweights in action in the World Powerlifting Championships, plus part two of the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders and the conclusion of the World Series of Poker. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Tony Hill on the sideline. It appears to be a bruised right thigh above the knee. the Dallas defense. 76,490 in the stands today. And something to yell about here in Jersey, huh, at the Meadowlands? That, that is an all-time record. That's the best field position, by the way, that the fans and the Giants have seen today. The earliest or the best they had it before that was from the 25 on that scoring drive. By the way, some of the fans, we understand, have been calling saying uh, these are not just New York fans. These are also New Jersey fans. The important thing is they are giant fans. Right. And they are some of the best. Second down, Taylor.
Taylor the carry. Maybe one. Mike Hagman, number 58 on the tackle. And Randy Hughes. By the way, we got a ruling when when young uh, Wilson had the ball hit his head on the punt and went into the end zone. The ruling was, according to the NFL uh, supervisor, Art McNally, that the ball's impetus carried it into the end zone, and therefore, Wilson did not have to run that ball out, that there would have been no safety had he been tackled in the end zone. And I don't understand that either. John Dutton lined up on the defense for Dallas. Bill Sims, the quarterback, and somebody on the right side of the giant offense moved. This play will go for naught. Stalls thought it happened in front of him. Dave is the one sort of leading the clapping. There's half undressed uh, young rookie from Morehead State. But it's no longer Phil Who, is it? Nope. Atlanta 10, Tampa Bay 7. Markowski to Jim Mitchell from close in, a four yard TD pass. Of course, they come to play the Giants next week. Ball start, number 74, offense, third down, timeout, Giants. Tom Neville, the violator, and the Giants have taken a timeout. It sims over talking to Perkins. Some Cowboy fans are here, too. How long do you want your car to last? <laughs> a million miles. She's already done 89,000, and the only thing I've ever done to the engine is tune it up. Of course, I check it regularly. And the only motor oil I've ever used in my car is Quaker State. Quaker State can't promise everyone the kind of mileage Julian Fry gets, but Quaker State helps cars last. And that's a fact. I guess that's why Quaker State's the best-selling motor oil in America. It took Beethoven four years to write that symphony. Some things can't be rushed. Good music and good wine. Paul Masson's Emerald Dry. A delicious white wine. Paul Masson wines taste so good because they're made with such care. What Paul Masson himself said nearly a century ago is still true today. We will sell no wine before it's time. The eyes and heart of a gunfighter. Boy, he's a good coach. Ray Perkins. <laughs> Sims has it. Hits. His receiver, Gary Shirt, down the middle and up for a first down. And Randy Hughes blitzed that time, and the Giants called the right play. 15 yard pickup. Cliff Harris on the tackle. There's number 42. A short pattern. You couldn't call for anything long. I guess that's the real secret about throwing against Dallas. Don't try to go for the home run. Go for six or eight yards and be happy with it. Just over nine minutes left to play, and now they are in field goal range for Danello if nothing else develops. He tried a 71 yarder last week, didn't he? <laughs> you think that was his range? <laughs> Perkins said he got the, perhaps the yard line markers mixed up a bit. Sends back to throw again and does. Wide open. Touchdown. Billy Taylor. Somebody made a mistake. Strong side linebacker went south. 14, 6, Giants. We have eight minutes and 43 seconds left to play at Giant Stadium, which is delirious at the moment. Alcoa can't wait. Since time began, nature has demonstrated the wisdom of recycling in rain that falls to the earth, travels to the sea, and rises to the clouds again. Now, man must learn to recycle too. 
At Alcoa, we've already started by initiating programs that are saving billions of aluminum cans every year, raw materials and energy too. Recycling, we're simply doing what nature has always done. We can't wait for tomorrow. Alcoa can't wait. Motorcraft battery, it's all right. Saved my life one dreadful night when I told Big Dutch I want to fight. He said, how about now? He broke a table over a chair. I went from a coop to go anywhere. My lights had been on while I was there. Motorcraft, don't fail me now. I turned the key as it came to the door. The motorcraft made the engine roar. Then I heard Big Dutch as he stamped and swore. Going to get me a motorcraft battery for sure. Motorcraft, for sure. Hollywood, the glamour capital, has another side. A seedy world of flesh peddlers where a killer is stalking the 11th victim. The Tuesday movie at 9, 8 Central and Mounted. You think this is not a happy crowd? They're dreaming about five in a row, and suddenly it might be a reality. And suddenly they'd be back in the playoff picture. If it holds up. But right. don't count this bunch out yet. Danello's high kick will come down to Steve Wilson. And Wilson will come down at the 17-yard line in the hands of Otis McKinney. Monday night on CBS. The White Shadow, MASH, WKRP in Cincinnati, and Lou Grant, all on CBS on Monday night. Dorsett came in with 777 yards. So far today, 25 yards on 14 carries. And again, there goes Jeter. And Mendenhall. And the place is Benham. Flag goes down and Starbuck. George Martin. Mendenhall. And Jeter. A three-man run. 64, Mendenhall really takes off. Watch Mendenhall. Fitzgerald makes contact. Now Rafferty takes a shot. Now Dorsett takes, our new house takes a shot. That is one great pass rush. He got underneath, Mendenhall got underneath Fitzgerald and straightened him up with a forearm. Full start, number 61, Athens, decline. There was Cooper. Difficult time with George Martin. That's a 39-yard field goal by Tony Franklin for Philadelphia. Chant that was so familiar in New York at one time. Defense moves up in the crowd on second and 18. Number 70, Gary Jeter. Shotgun formation for Dallas and Roger Staubach waiting for the snap from John Fitzgerald. The one hander. Fitzgerald with Mendenhall left in front of him. Fires down the middle. Ron Springs cuts back to the outside. It springs out here at the 25 yard line. Alan Caldwell and Brad Van Pelt made the tackle. Good call. It's a screen middle. A screen middle from the shotgun. Let everybody come through. And of course, that. Defensive rush is hot now anyway. Springs takes it up the right sideline as Roger watches. And a very good play by Van Pelt kept the first down from being made. Good play by number 10 with help. And it'll be third and four. It's still Tabor. Coming to the giant defensive group. And they now go with a four-man front. And the last time they did this, Dallas didn't block it.
good kick. Hammond up with a fair catch signal. Handles it with Wilson looking right at his face. Giants will operate from their own 36-yard line. 45-yard kick for Danny White. Los Angeles one Sunday and Dallas the next. It's almost too much. We look, start looking at those records. If Dallas loses and Philadelphia wins, they'd be tied for first place in the NFC. In the Eastern Conference with records of seven and three. Was Washington loses, they'd be six and four, and they are losing. And the Giants all of a sudden would project themselves into the picture with a record of five and five. Coder slugs his way for a few yards. Bob Brunick. 34-yard run by Otis Anderson, the great young rookie at St. Louis has Minnesota by the throat. I must caution Ballast. It's a very good team, the Cowboys, and they have come back from behind many times. And if there's any premature celebrating by the Giants, very big mistake. It'll be second and six. John Dutton. Remains in the Dallas defense. Don't turn over the ball. Be very careful for the next six minutes and 14 seconds. Not running. Sims gives to Taylor. Taylor gets barely back to the line of scrimmage. Johnny Perkins and uh, Aaron Kyle get all tangled up downfield. Sims's composure is fantastic, but I keep thinking about the ways that Landry and his staff can put things away that you do all the time. Maybe they can block a punt or steal a play from your book and give it back to you. I don't know about that. I don't know if they'll make it this year or not. Those girls better leave now if they're going to go to Pasadena. It's a long walk. They may not have to walk. On third down. The struggle is for a first, and the struggle is not quite successful. Well, the, remember, the neck sizes get smaller on the team that is trying to do it maybe for the first time. While confidence is always there with a the young team, uh, don't forget the champ can come back and drill you one time and knock you out. Boy, as Jennings been punting, look at this. 45, 43, 43, and 72. Out of punt pass and kick competition. Dave Jennings. He'd win it today, wouldn't he? I'd even like to announce that. Dave Jennings and Steve Wilson way back. Jennings hits another one. Wilson coming over and handles it. Gets to the 20. Puts somebody's head. Gets outside. Five to about the 28. 39-yard kick that time by Jennings. There's Perkins still cool on the sidelines. As I told you before the game, he looked every giant in the eye and wished him good luck. Very strong factor with a young football team. What is it like to look a gunfighter in the eye? Just hope he isn't blowing the smoke off the end of the barrel, right? Then you wouldn't be looking. Down, down. Roger Starbuck has played all the way. Martin again almost got away. Pass is caught by Butch Johnson, I think. Uh, Drew Pearson, this is. Oh, he's got to be hurting. Roach really stuck Drew Pearson in the back. And you know, we always think of these people as being such monsters. Drew is 180 pounds tops. That's a ring and wet with a rock in his pocket. Look at this shot he takes in the back. Holds on to the ball. We always think about them as all being people like Randy White or Harvey Martin, but they're not all that large. And Drew with those spindly legs of his. Like he's lucky to be out there at all. Tomac is going to go again. Dorsett with a blocker. Nate Scott out in front. He gets close to midfield before George Martin makes the tackle. New England 16, Buffalo 6. That's Krogan to Stanley Morgan, 63-yarder. I can't figure out why Dorsett cut back to the inside of the field. Scott had a good block on the outside. Tony cut back into traffic. A lot of people walking around on the giant bench, and Tony Hill is walking toward the Dallas locker room. Staubach. The ball deflected. 
intercepted by Martin again. Looks like uh, it might be the end of the day for Tony Hill, at least. He's got a bruise, it looked like, maybe on the thigh on that end around when he fumbled. That's what it looked like. Things are not too comfortable right now. It's a long flight back should the team lose. I've always found that the nicks and bruises and cuts don't hurt nearly as much if you pull it out. A third down situation for the Cowboys. The Giants lead at 14-6. Three minutes, 12 seconds left to play. Giants have two timeouts left. Dallas has all of them, all three. Ball back. Brooks Johnson, I believe, held on. Oh. Yes, remember he the, did. Remember the catch that Butch Johnson made against Denver in Super Bowl? Super Bowl 13, was it? In the New Orleans Superdome. That's right. One of the great catches, and this one has to rank with it. It might be very important before this season is over. Ray Rhodes. Well, Butch Johnson is very important with Tony Hill limping toward the locker room. Clock still running, 235 by the time they get this playoff. Giants lead 14-6. Pearson. Touchdown. Terry Jackson couldn't keep him out. Andrew Pearson gets in 33 yard strike from Staubach. That's only the second touchdown catch, and Perkins wants to know what happened to the coverage. Now look at the blocking, and Staubach kept his backs in. Martin put a pretty good pass when I shot, and Roger nailed it right on. There's Pearson, he got hit in the back, remember? Earlier he almost caught one at the goal line, didn't quite. He got a second TD, emphatically. Raphael Septien with Danny White holding. It is now 14-12. The Giants over Dallas. Two minutes, 24 seconds left to play. 14-13. And now, that goal line stand in the first half looms a little bit larger. But just remember that Raphael Septian has made 51-yard field goals strongly this year. So the big problem right now for the Giants is to hold the ball, finish the game off, and don't let Dallas get it back. That's going to be the big one. And also remember that the Cowboys have all three of their timeouts remaining. And you wonder right here about the possibility of an onside kick. I don't think so. Not with one of the best defenses in football. Woods Johnson made a heck of a catch to set up the touchdown catch by Drew Pearson. Look at this. But championship teams have those people. Tony Hill is hurt. Woods Johnson's waiting for a chance to play, and he's a quality player. Look at the ball. It's still hanging up there, isn't it? Looks like a cat playing with a ball of yarn, huh? Slap, slap it up a couple of times. See, that's one cat and one rat we've had in the broadcast today. <laughs> I sound like I'm reading the Smithsonian. Or a Walt Disney book. 14 <laughs> 13. Giants over the Cowboys. And it is an onside kick. Giants got it. Cheater got it. who made the recovery and even if he hadn't and the Cowboys had gotten it they would have had to do it again because it didn't go those 10 yards 219 left very careful handoff time though young quarterback put the ball right in there tell the guys cover it up let's protect it and go home and have a big party in Manhattan tonight or wherever we had an illegal touching on the kick the penalty is refused First down. One thing significant that we might keep in mind for future days, Septian did that with his left foot. You would notice that he did it with his left foot. Cincinnati 21, Baltimore 14. Of course, the illegal touching referred to the ball and the player, right? The fact that it didn't go 10 yards. The ball. <laughs> Come 
Sims in motion. Sims gets the Coder. Coder trying to get around the outside. Breaks away momentarily. Cliff Harris. Interceptian. Of course, his father is a world-class soccer player down in Mexico, and maybe he taught Rafe how to do this at a very young age. But he didn't go 10. Left-footed. Tell you, Bill Austin's done a heck of a job with the giant offensive line. He showed up before game number two and has taken Benson and Neville and Van Horn got healthy and came back. Jimmy Clack and J.T. Turner. They've done a heck of a job blocking against the Dallas Cowboys this afternoon. Dallas burned one of their timeouts. They still have two left. The Giants have two left. Stall back in conference with Landry. You know, Dallas faces opponents now the rest of the way that are 60 percentile as far as one loss records. Uh, if there's an early part of a football season anymore, Dallas has already gone through it. They have what? Philadelphia twice? Philadelphia twice, Washington. Twice. Twice. Giants again, Houston on Thanksgiving Day. Of course, no games are easy, right? No. We used to have a few teams that I like the ones I played for that, you know, everybody looked forward to playing. They tried to schedule us back to back through the whole season. But it's all tough now. Parody. In fact, when we used to win, they used to fire the coach. The other team would say, you've got to be a bad coach if you can't beat those <laughs> Tell you is I played the, on a Cardinal team that won one game in two years. But it was a big win, right? The Bears, the biggest handoff is to Coder, and he is stopped by Harvey Martin and Randy White. About a yard gain, no more. How about running right at Harvey Martin and Randy White? They shared the MVB trophy, right? Sim says, let's, let's load it up and run right at those cats and see if they're good. And they were. And they are. 35 it is. How many times have you wanted to pack it all in and take off? Well, with Hertz economy fares, the time to go is now. Our subcompacts are only $14.95 a day, weekends, and just $98 a week. All with free mileage. Larger cars are only dollars more a day. And if you rent for three weekdays or more, Hertz has special economy fares for that, too. Hertz economy fares. Now you can't afford not to rent from number one. Now, the best Zenith ever, System 3, is even better. Even better. The sharpest Zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. An all-modular chassis. Designed to be the most reliable Zenith ever. Most reliable. And now, better sound. Four speakers. Audio jacks. Even an audio control center. Better sound. Zenith. System 3. System 3. Now, even better. It's going to take us a long time to get out of this stadium today because nobody has left. Looks like more people have come in. And the hilarity in the parking lot will continue. If the Giants can hang on, Phil Sims being very cool at the moment, the rookie, has two minutes to go. And this will be the biggest win if they can hang on this team in a long, long time. Pass is deflected, and it's too far away for Danilo. Stahl's made a pretty good run, number 65, but I don't know who got their hand on it. And I noticed that the receiver coming across the middle, Ernest Gray, got banged at least twice, even though the ball was over his head. That play took four seconds. That's Harvey Martin. You can see an all-out effort there as he's dumped by Benson. I believe it's Bob Bruning, the middle linebacker. Got a hand on it? Jennings standing back uh, just at his own territory. And Steve Wilson back at the 10. He'll try to knuckle this one. He'll try to get it out of bounds. And he does. Let's see where it went out. What a punt. Think we can get him a pinto for nothing? At Think the he's nine. won the contest again. A unit. It takes good defense to back up a great kicking game, and so far the Giants have had it. Now we've got 
91 yards. One minute, 49 seconds, and two timeouts left for Dallas. He's got to get inside the 30, not either the 35, or can he? All right, 35 yard line, let's go. 35, maybe a little bit closer than that. That would make it 52 yards if he got to the 35 for Raphael Sepien. Ron Springs and Tony Dorsett. The running backs, but uh, I think the run is out of the question. The protection. Dorsett swings to the outside up to about, oh, about the 17 before he goes down. Now you Does, think that doesn't scare you to be the linebacker like Van Pelt was, one on one with Dorsett. Actually, he had Dorsett nailed, and Tony just slipped and pulled inside, and Van Pelt didn't even touch him. Scary time to play defense. Block continues with 125. The play gets underway. Going low for Ron Springs. Rebound by Van Pelt. He's played some uh, game in that black jacket or that uh, best vest or whatever he's calling that thing. And so a big third down situation coming up. 14-13, Giants over Dallas, 121 left to play. Clock stopped with that incomplete pass. Third down, they need two. Are you going to gamble on a little pass rush, or should you play it with just three men? Gary Jackson now asking for the crowd to lend some support. Laidlaw in the backfield with Roger Starback. Protection holds up. And the pass is complete and out of bounds on the far side of the field to Drew Pearson, the clutch man. And Starbuck had two receivers wide open in the same area. Watch number 33 come from right to left from the shotgun. You see Dorsett? He's the short man. He's open, too. Good pass to call where you got two receivers. You can take one look and spot him early. Wise man number 12. Ray Rhodes couldn't quite get there. Drew Pearson is now caught five passes. 97 yards. Starback in the huddle. Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end, is lined up on the right side and now moves into the backfield. Pearson's foot wide to the right. Puts Johnson to the left. That's caught by Pearson. Oh. That is buckled right in the middle. I don't know how he's not hurt now. Gary Jackson on the tackle, but Dallas comes roaring. And now they take a timeout. 27-yard pass, first down, Cowboys. Here's the catch. Terry Jackson thought he had fouled him. The more aerodynamic shape a vehicle has, the easier it slips through the air. And that's what happened to this pickup truck. Announcing the first new truck of the 80s, the new Ford. It's aerodynamically designed, so it's more slippery than last year. Has less drag, with the best gas mileage rating of any American-built pickup. And there's all that Ford-built toughness. Twin I-beam suspension and big payloads, too. Ford, aerodynamically designed for the fuel needs of the 80s. Built Ford Tough. Mike Ditka. In the background, Roger Staubach and Tom Landry. One minute, five seconds left to play. One timeout left for Dallas. How about predictability? That's what a championship team does. What do we do better than other people? Who do we go to? Pearson? Drew Pearson. Of course, Preston is injured and not playing today. And Tony Hill has exit. Bush Johnson is the other wide receiver now. Drew Pearson has caught six. And a couple of times he's just been bent to where he was doubled. And Roger has thrown 29 times and completed 19. The Giants now, in an effort to get some pressure on Staubach, have gone to that four-man front again. Now you got different coverage by the linebackers and your secondary. Be careful. And the Cowboys, as we mentioned before, had a tough time handling this four-man front on two previous occasions. A screen pass called to Dorsett. Dorsett being chased by Jeter. Dorsett still on his feet. Tony Dorsett down the far sideline. Inside the 15. Dorsett and now the field goal team get ready. Okay, now you feed a computer, you put numbers in it, but they're really people and the predictable people 
the class people can come through. Now watch this play by Dorsett. A great call, screen for the shotgun. Now he gets hit and fumbles it midair and we kept, watch him re-catch it right here. Put it away, back to the outside. Woo. Ray Oldham knocked him out of bounds, but the line of scrimmage now has changed to the 12-yard line. Springs comes out. Clock is stopped with 53 seconds left to go, and Dallas still has a timeout remaining. How many more chances do you want to take uh, handling the ball before you kick it? I guess you want to wind the clock down to where there's no time left if you're thinking three points for a win. Staubach has come over to the sideline. Scoreboard still shows that both teams have a timeout left. The Giants took that timeout. 53 seconds left on what is, I guess, an official clock as you see on the screen. It is official. Otherwise, we would not take the picture. Remember now, Jeter blocked the field goal attempt by Stennerud, who's a side saddle kicker against Kansas City. Came right at the middle. That all goes into the thing. Do we try a field goal early, or do we go ahead and hand off to somebody and try to get six? Well, we have a timeout left. Staubach, by the way, is 20 out of 30 for 266 yards. I think we run a trap play on first down. Well, you can fumble the football, and people in Dallas uniforms have double dribbled a couple of times in the past. It has been a clutch drive conducted by Roger Staubach. Did, did they ever ask you as a kicker to, what you wanted to do, whether you wanted to kick it early or late? No, they never asked because <laughs> I was afraid. They couldn't find you? Ball at the 12, first and 10, Laidlaw and Dorsett. And there is Dorsett racked up right at the middle. Gary Jeter led that charge. Oh, that's a bunch of bobcats on the line of scrimmage right now. Martin, Jeter, Mendenhall, and the young man from Oklahoma when he comes in. Uh, Tabor have been really studs. They've been very strong. Boy, it's quiet here right now as everybody sort of waits for whatever's going to happen. And the Giants have just called another timeout. And that's all for them. 15 out of 21 for 214 yards in the second half for Roger Staubach. If next week's games are anything like this week's games, you don't want to miss St. Louis at Washington, Tampa Bay against Detroit, Los Angeles at Chicago, Minnesota Green Bay, San Francisco, New Orleans, and Atlanta will be here. Patrick Septian is 9 of 10 to the 40-yard line. Now, we're inside of that. You kick it, though, like it's a 40-yarder. It's a good, strong, firm kick. You're not trying to... Uh, you know, hit a wedge in over a bunker, right? I mean, you're just going to kick it your best stroke. You hope to kick everything just alike, but you can't do that. The closer you get, the more you try to guide it. Is it harder for a side saddle kicker? I would think they're on the right side of the field now, the left hash mark for a side saddle kicker. They would be much more effective from there and much less likely to hook it. Good point. 38 seconds left. There it is. 13, the Giants lead. It is second and 11 at the 13. Starback is going to throw. But he doesn't. And it becomes more difficult now for Raphael Septian. Gary Jeter led the charge. That was a surprise call, all right. Wasn't it, though? Not a bad call because you had Starback as your quarterback. Talk about a few uh, moments of anxiety. Here comes Van Pelt, blitzed as soon as he saw Roger fade. Clock running, Dallas is going to try to run one more play and then use their timeout. Dangerous, dangerous stuff. Calculated. The handoff is to Dorset. Dorset stops the clock, he gets out of bounds, does not get a first. I can't believe that's a better position to kick a field goal from than the one you had back there a few plays earlier. The only thing it is, it's closer. And Raphael Septian goes in with Danny White to hold. It'll be from uh, 22 yards out. Remember, Jeter, number 70, comes right up the middle. And they will pull a couple of people out and try to shove the big man from Southern Cal right up the middle. Six seconds left to play. The Giants lead 14-13. And Danny White puts it down at the 13-yard line, which will make it 23 yards away from the goal 
goalpost. Good snap. Perfect. Three seconds left on the clock as Raphael set the end. Hits from 23 yards out. 16-14. The Cowboys lead the Giants. The dejected Giants who have played so very well. And so has Dallas. You give a man a couple of days to himself and a Black & Decker workmate, and there's almost nothing he can't do. You can pound on it, saw on it, hammer on it, and sand on it. The sturdy vice jaws do the holding for you. You can clamp on it, paint on it, cut a shape on it, drive a screw on it. There's almost nothing you can't do. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. Raphael Septien's field goal from 23 yards out. And he didn't have to lead any cheers. But that's the reason that teams like Dallas packed to go to Pasadena. They had nowhere to go, right? They were going to take their loss? Not that much. And by the way, that drive by Roger Starbucks about as good as... I have ever seen him pull off, and he's done the Hail Mary and all of us. I'll tell you what, a couple of clutch catches by Tony Dorsett and Drew Pearson and Butch Johnson. Don't forget him. Zepdiak. Line drive, kickoff, fumble to juggle. That'll be all of it. Easily race. Struggling around. A penalty is down. Let's see who it's again. It may not, against it, may not be all. It can't end. The game cannot end on a penalty or a half, so... Depends on who it's against, right? Might have been clipping yeah, against the yard. foul. Black below the waist. On the return. The game is over. The game is over. And Ray Perkins watches his four-game winning streak just come to an end. He's got to be the happiest guy in the ballpark other than Tom Landry. What a great job he did getting this giant team ready. No booing in here this afternoon. None whatsoever. As the crowd still applauds the effort by the Giants. Roger Staubach put together a brilliant second half. In this victory for Dallas, 16-14. He is recorded personally against the Giants. He's now 15 and 1. Pat, the whole thing is that when you see a player when he's not playing so well in all sports and they still win that is the you know that's the the real classification of champions or not you can see Carson and Jeter talking to Dennis Thurman over there but I'll tell you a few minutes ago if Thurman had gone over and said something to Jeter Jeter would have drilled him and here's a magnificent linebacker Harry Carson. Carson by the way uh, the Philadelphia Eagles of course chasing Dallas and with 321 left to play in that game between Cleveland and Philadelphia